Welcome everyone to Group D of the GSL 2024. In the top left of Hard Light, we do have Solar, and in the bottom right, we do have Ryung. So this is the uh, probably hardest group to call. Uh, unfortunately, there is one player that's a relatively easy call to uh, not make it out, and that is, in fact, the guy we're looking at, Ryung. As he is up against the likes of Solar for his first match, but then possibly Cure or Hero for his second match. Um, I do believe he is drastically not favored in this matchup. Uh, his TVZ has always been probably... Well, I don't know about always, to be fair. I mean, <laughs> he was a very, very good player a while ago. But uh, as far as his post-military comeback, he's basically shown strength in TVT and TVP. Not at all in TVZ. But he still is a good, um, uh, I guess, uh, build order brewer. And he talks to people so he can figure stuff out to at least be... Uh, it's challenging, but it, it just it, it is his worst matchup, and Solar is one of the best at it. So I think he's an underdog coming into this one, and then it'll be an underdog versus either the Protoss or the Terran he faces, even though he is better in those matchups. So um, yeah, Ryung is uh, you know if he surprises me, great, but it's a hard group for him. And then meanwhile, Solar, Hero, and Cure very difficult to determine who actually is going to make it out from those three. I'm going to say uh, my brain says Solar and Cure. My heart does say Cure and Hero. Sorry, Solar, but uh, that Terran Protoss bias, you know. But Solar legitimately, uh, you know, one of the favorites to make it out, I'd say. So, um, yeah, I think Solar Cure is kind of the brain. Hero's been up and down and, and a bit questionable. But anyway, that's just the overall look of the group. We do have this TVZ pretty much underway now with a little bit of a ferocious opener. Two racks clearly scouted by Ryung, or by Solar. Now, Solar doesn't always go for, let's call this an aggressive Overlord scout. In fact, many times he doesn't do this at all. He keeps his first Overlord very far away in case this is a tricky Marine opener looking to kill the Overlord. But I think he just, you know, knows that Ryung might not be a player that's like that. Um, he'll be a lot more cautious against the like of Yun, for instance. But it is going to be three Reapers and a Marine. So this is where Solar's Overlord does need to be a little bit careful. Now the Overlord Pillar is a bit far away, so I don't know if the Marine's actually going to use the barracks to lift off and try and kill that. That might seem a little dangerous, but it is a choice that he could make. It is three CC as well behind this, so just this little tiny bit of pressure that really hasn't done anything. It's killed two Lings. I would still say it's not anything, right? Third hatchery, most importantly, was able to get up and running before those Reapers got on top of it. And uh, no drones have died. That is the most important thing. Nice micro there from Ryung, getting some more freebie lings. And that's better than nothing. But he really wants to be focusing mainly on, on scouting and making sure that Solar isn't doing a surprise all-in as he does go for a very greedy build behind this. You can see how delayed any type of factory would be. And oh my god, this is the, actually the most... This is the greediest thing you can ever do, actually. 3cc double engineering bay before any additional barracks or factory. That is the greediest, literally. It is the greediest. So, yeah. But you know what? Solar, very unlikely to be a guy who attacks. If this was dark, very risky. If this was Ragnarok, now Shin, very risky. But against Solar, probably okay. And then the Reapers are supposed to scout whatever could be happening anyway. So... There is always that. It's also a preferable starting area for Young, as his add-ons are on the right side of his barracks. This reactor still may be a little vulnerable, I guess, technically, but only if it was a Bane bust and Solar again. It's just not that type of person to do that. A Baneling bust actually would have been amazing, and Solar has done a Baneling bust versus a Turax opener before, but I think that was in a couple of best of fives, first of all after a pattern was set by his uh, Terran opponent. And I think uh, against, you know, uh, I was gonna say better opponents, it's very rude, but <laughs> against scarier opponents for him, in which, you know, you had to kind of take a gamble and try and offset their momentum. I don't think Ryung's that scary of an opponent. Solo can play a very normal game and be um, pretty likely to win it. Now that said, we do have a Roach Warren on the way, kind of sneakily placed in the backside as well. Now this could be for some early Roaches to, to kind of surprise them, can take that map control, and then into maybe a Roach-based game. 
That's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, you know, you could also hide that it is a roach-based play and go for a 1-1 one, one roach all-in, which is very popular in hard lead, in which case you only try and show your queens and your lings. But then it's also possible that Solar, just not knowing what his opponent was doing, thought this could possibly be a 3 or 4 racks follow-up, particularly a 4 racks, right? In which case the roaches would be a little sturdier to help out. And the Marines did move out, but it wasn't that many of them. So, um, if that was Ryung's intention, was to kind of scare Solar, then it probably worked. But the Roach game might be his plan all along, too. I mean, it's, it's actually kind of kind of difficult to tell. I mean, Solar saw the gas timing. He saw... I mean, it's kind of it. <laughs> and then I don't think it's enough. I think the Marine push-out might have happened sooner, to be fair, but... I don't know. Anyway, like I was saying, the other thing that this could be, and it was either decided before this game started or not, is you just hide that you are going roaches. I mean, if they're not going to really push you, then you can try and just hide the roaches as long as possible so that they start building widow mines instead of tanks. Now, they might realize it's roaches and might move over into tank production, but maybe that means there's one less tank for the attack and that's good for the Zerg. So, either way you slice it, uh, Solar is in a fine position, in my opinion, even though Ryung has gotten to a 3cc... Double engine, holy shit, I actually did not realize that is how fast upgrades can get. His 2-2 starts when Solar's 1-1 one, one starts. I mean, this isn't the fastest evolution chamber build from a Zerg player, to be fair, but holy shit. <laughs> that is insane. Um, yeah, okay. Well, Solar's not going to go for any type of all-in. We do see the Infestation Pit on the way, but it is getting to a macro game, and that's where I just have the ultimate confidence in Solar, even though Ryung has gotten away with, again, the greediest build a Terran player can do, and that should theoretically set him up very nicely. I just believe in Solar's ability to, to get out of such a position so much more. You know, he wasn't uh, aware of his opponent's build order and maybe as greedy as he could have been, Lose the queen right there. And his roaches have finally been revealed for sure. But I uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Feel good for Solar. As he has not died yet. Not gonna die anytime soon either. We actually have no factory units. Ryung going for a lot of bio. Only now adding on his first factory units and then a second factory coming in swiftly as well. I mean, when Ryung does push out, these upgrades are going to be absolutely insane. But it looks like Solar is going to be on Hive technology before that happens. And as such, a couple of Vipers will take away at least some of the tank production. And then it's only the bio left over. I mean, upgraded bio versus pure roach actually is a kick in the nuts. But then that's where the Banely Nest is getting added on and can add some volatility to the engagements. It looks like Ryong is quite scared of the possibility of a 1-1 roach attack, even though he actually sees that it is Hive. I think what he's thinking is that you know, we could still have a lot of roaches on the field, and still he has a very low number of tanks. So I think that's what he's primarily worried about, is that low tank number. He canceled something, but I'm not actually sure what. Maybe a barracks? Maybe he was going to build his barracks there and then realized where uh, the roaches would probably attack if they attacked. I'm going to guess that's what that was it. Uh, but three racks are on the way because he's getting up to four CC already. It's the, the strongest macro game a Terran could ever have. But Solar isn't really all that far behind. And nothing has really occurred that drastically changes this game. If Ryung had a really strong push out that bopped the fourth base before Solar is ready to defend... Then I would be like, well, there's the reward there. And then, of course, behind this, there's 4CC and, and 3-3 starting up as well. That's really brutal on the Zerg player. But the Zerg player has not taken any damage, maybe indirectly from just the build orders. And, well, actually, he's losing the resources lost. Okay, sure. But it's still getting to five bases, 80 drones, all their own upgrades, Ultralis Cavern on the way as well. And I'm afraid Ryong's pushouts, which I'm actually, I don't even think it's going to be off of a maxed out push. There still are... Very few tank. Okay, well, you went into Wood of Mines, that's why. All right. Yeah, there's nine Wood of Mines now. That's a bit better looking. Still. Um, still. Is he going to push out? And will he push out as confidently as he needs to to beat the Ultralisk timing? Is another question. Ah, uh, well. Most of the army is moving out. Tanks left at home to try and help defend against run buys. Big ol' army off to the right side. Caught by the sensor tower. Pulls back to deal with the marine drop. 
And we do see the queens all getting slaughtered. Actually, Solar did see that army, I thought, but I um, made that up. And it, so this army just pounces on top of Solar's base, scans ahead, but then here come the reinforcements, and there's not enough staying power here. Vipers come in for a couple of... Oh my god, parasitic bombs. Holy shit. No! Oh, but one medevac going down. Well, there it is. Goes down as well, and this medevac is just one little hex away. Oh, that one's actually going to get killed. So yeah, there's one medevac left over. What a colossal loss of life there for Young. And he really hasn't found all that much. A handful of lings that were run into single file to the Marines, okay. Some lost mining on the right side, but nine drones killed overall was not worth the loss of life again for Ryung. Now, Ryung can replace it. He is on eight barracks, tons of reactors, adding on the tech labs. He can replace it almost as fast as he was losing it, almost like a Zerg player. You see that his supply didn't drop all that heavily, but certainly any type of fear, any type of uh, momentum gain, it just wasn't there. Solar cleans everything up despite the attempted, you know, tri-prong pressure almost, because something probably should have been hitting this base as well as the main. And as such, now we can feel confident getting to all their upgrades. Has the ultras out, didn't lose any spellcasters unnecessarily, didn't have to use that many banelings to have that moment where you're like, oh shit, I have no banelings. Uh, and it just, it didn't actually amount to very much. Rung's gonna need a much stronger push, or to start actually doing damage with a multi-prong push which uh, he's currently not doing, just going in with one big ball of bio. The upgrades are insane. 3-3 three, three is going to finish up for the Terran, but it just doesn't matter when you use the army like that. Very inefficiently, I would say. As far as the resources lost, yes, the Zerg still loses out. Banelings are Banelings after all, but I mean, it's actually kind of funny being this late into the, the late game, you know? Like, both of them just went to four base versus five so quickly. And I think such a small resource loss trade, but it is what it is. And it's also really, really not bad for a Zerg player. 3,000 resource difference in a TVZ, totally acceptable. Things should be getting much worse for Solar as Ryung digs in his heels, recognizing that aggression is not going to work out. He does set up liberators and stays at home, builds into ghosts, doesn't have to worry about any more bio upgrades, that's for sure, and adds on some SimCity, but Solar, Really, never missing a beat here is already on the offensive, feeling like he can actually take this on. Ghost not getting any snipes quite yet, but Baneling's also not making the best connections. Actually, those couple of last connections uh, combined with a Widow Mine friendly fire might be good enough. Only two ghosts left over at the end of all of that. The two Ultras will be probably sniped down. Yeah, that's maybe the easiest thing here, but even the Corosa Biles hitting as Ryung tries to chase back after he does find the Ultra in revenge, but still a 5,000 resource difference, and the loss of a command center is not what a Turtle Terran late game really wants to have from that. So that's a, it was, ended up being a very, I would say, a good strike there for Solar, who has the economy, 87 drones, now going up to six bases, as well as lots of production capability to continue doing that. Rung does have a little bit of a drop. Oh, to finally kill that hatchery. That was weakened from the earlier multi-pronged aggression, sure. But it's still five bases, and that's about what Solar needs to mine correctly off of 86 drones. Yeah, you can see oversaturation is happening because Mana Natural is trying to mine out, but it's, it's going to be fixed very, very quickly, I guess is more so my point. Rung does absolutely have a second chance to do the Turtle Terran thing as he quickly replaces that fifth planetary with yet another one. Fifth base planetary, not fifth planetary, you know what I mean. Um, and that's good news. That is good news for Ryung, but oops, it is. He has to press the wrong button here. And only, okay, that was just 10 second rewind, rewind my bad. Anyway, um, yeah, it's good news for Ryung, but then he still has to face one of the world's best late game Zergs at uh, a point in which the Zerg has never really felt truly uncomfortable, I would say. Six base does seem to have been killed. No, canceled. It was canceled. The other one was killed. And the uh, ghost count is rising. Where are we at now? Eight ghosts. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. A little more Sim City to work with as well. Double the Liberators covering that same spot. Ryung certainly is getting to that late game turtle that is so difficult for really anyone to break. Solar is going to make sure that he's going to have the economy to continue just uh, hitting the same position over and over again. That would be the number one concern is that he had 
use up his bank producing these corruptors as well as reinforcing with the ultras. He knows that liberators are going to be a problem. Yes, he could try and use vipers only to deal with them, but when the, the ghosts are out, the EMPs, the snipes, it's a little bit dangerous. I mean, anything's dangerous against ghosts, I suppose. There's no, uh, there's no easy answer. A little what of mine drop is cute. It's better than nothing, I suppose. Gets a little scouting done as well. Sees that that's not a greater spire. So actually, certainly with the worth the wood of mine. I'm not sure about the medevac, but yeah. With Ryung having an even bigger bank than his opponents, I would say that medevac is totally a okay to do so. A greater spire is, however, on the way. Now that is something again the wood of mine scouts, but it's also just like logical. Of course, the Zerg player is going to be adding on not just the economy and the bank that they would need to tackle this late game, but also all of the technology. They want to have the option to tech swap whenever they think it is appropriate. Excellent snipes and EMPs on those Vipers. Case in point about using them only as the anti-liberator is why it's dangerous. Exactly that. Uh, the Vipers just, they're frankly more obnoxious. I mean, Corruptors are also very expensive and they're pretty much guaranteed to get sniped down as well. But honestly, Viper reproduction is just obnoxious. It's just, you know, you gotta make them, and then you gotta soak up the juice on the hatcheries, and then you actually gotta, uh, I guess, control them independent. Well, I guess, prep is off the control. Them. It basically is just the soaking up the juice, I suppose. That's annoying about it. And, uh, he's actually not even gonna bother replacing the Vipers. Not yet, anyway. I mean, I think Vipers, always useful, but then we are seeing a lot more of the Infestors, aren't we? So, we'll probably be seeing that. Not that the Infestors will do um, anything as far as the, the sharking around, because Rung's not being very active, and he's siege-hopping missile turrets as well. But obviously, if it gets a fungal to stop a handful of snipes, then that is pretty good. But no, uh, no Infestors as of yet. No Marauder's slow either, and that's just a mistake there from Ryung, who kind of... I mean, he mostly skipped the heavy Marauder portion of a TVZ. Usually, there is a little bit more of a of a beat to it, you know, first there's the Marine beat, then there's the Marine Marauder beat, and then there's the Marine Marauder Ghost beat. But he basically skipped the Marauders and went right into Heavy Ghost, lost a few in that kind of haphazard engagement, and now is up to 15. Just a nice number. Three of them will go down, however, as they are surrounded. Didn't expect Solo to actually jump on top of that, I suspect. The rest of the Ghosts cloak up, the three Overseers still ready to go. Missile turrets also helping to take care of the Corruptors, of course, making this more and more of a trade. And Solar really didn't find as much as he was hoping for. Basically, those three ghosts, 10 in total in this game is okay. 25, what am I as well? Um, and then only two SCVs. Command centers get planted back down for some Sim City, and there's still some missile turrets as well as snipes looking to hit those corruptors. Widow mines planted down as well. And Solar is certainly not getting the easy cleanup that he was hoping for. Does manage to find the left side drop that was eyeing potentially running into this base, so that's good news for Solar, as well as the bank is great news for Solar. Feels like three minutes ago he was, you know, eh, you know, definitely not on a bank. Now, three minutes later, with all the bases, 82 drones, he has 3,000, 3,500, 2,000 about, so he just used so much of his money to rebuild 11 corruptors, which will know about looking, no doubt, be looking to help against Liberator, sure, but then also go into Broodlords. Now, again, I am still waiting for those Infestors. <laughs> and I still don't have them, but all right then. Maybe he doesn't need them. These are Cracklings, 3-3 three, three, and Adrenal Glands. They'll tear through things pretty quickly, but this is not exactly worthwhile. The Planetary is doubled up on its upgrades as well. Nukes are coming down, and Ryung is certainly giving us a late game to compete with one of the world's best Zergs. I thought it'd be a little easier for Solar to get through this, but oh my goodness, he even almost dies at the nuke. Jesus Christ. Not gonna happen again here. It would have been Olive's army anyway, but it was almost, it was almost poor. Another nuke is on the way. Ring is gonna continue with that while also expanding. It's his way of actually getting some form of aggression out in the field without really committing a whole lot. You do lose the nuke even if it doesn't go off, so it's, it's a cost, but I would say it's a easier and sneakier cost than trying to set two medevacs worth of units down, in which, uh, you know, he did try that with three medevacs and they got caught, right? Neural Parasite finally on the way, two Vipers finally on the way, second Spire finally on the way, and I feel like we have now completed everything a Zerg player needs for the late game, assuming again he actually gets Infestors. But all of the options are available. All of the options for the Zerg. There we go, four Infestors now on the way. And Solar might also be looking again to build into Broodlords. That would be kind of the ultimate late game Zerg composition. 
Uh, Planetary is going to get bobbed There's just too many Banelings. Can't stop that from happening. The question is whether or not Solar gets punished for the sacrifice there. The sacrifice of Banelings is one thing, but those ghosts, if they were in position, also could have gotten some more revenge snipes. That would have actually been much nicer. As it is, I think uh, 9,000 resource difference. Probably getting a little scary for Solar, because you know they're just replacing that command center ASAP. Now, uh, kind of two-for-one deal might be worth it. Far less Banelings sacrificed in this. That was just mostly the Cracklings doing the work there, so it does look better. We have a new coming down, but uh, yeah, looks like Solar is totally aware of it. Gonna lose Creep Timbers. And a Spore. And a Spore. Seven SCVs go down, but Ryung's still at 58. It's actually a really damn good number because he has a bunch of mules. He's now on two nukes being produced at a time, and he is getting this base to the bottom left set up as he is already on the middle right base. Now, now usually on hard lead, five bases is where the Terran is truly tested because then as they struggle to get a sixth, they start to have openings around the fourth, around the fifth, around the third. The fact that Ryung, I mean, he has kind of had some engagements, right? He's lost a couple of bases in the middle of this map, but then ultimately has never been overrun is the most important thing. He was never overrun. The dominoes didn't begin to fall. And the fact that he's actually been able to get up these bases with some static defense is, well, frankly, better than a lot of other Terrans versus Solar. <laughs> I mean, Solar definitely has a... The same history a lot of other Zergs in this map, which is defeating the Terran Turtle around this five base setup. Hasn't happened, and so he is forced to go into what we'll call extreme late game ZVT. But he's still familiar with this as well. And he is going into, like I said, that ultimate late game composition. It's going to be 16 Broodlords, 9 Infestors, a handful of Corruptors that actually might just be more Broodlords. That could be a mistake because what's something that no other Terran does really, Ryung is doing. He actually did go into Vikings. So he has triple Starport. No, I'm sorry, six tuple Starport. And uh, actually went into a decent number of Vikings. Not something that a Zerg player honestly expects. But it's kind of, there's a reason they don't expect it, though. And that is because Parasitic Bomb and Fungal is actually very effective against it as well, right? <laughs> so, you know, it's like, eh, you want to know that that's your plan, because then it's going to change how they take an engagement. And you want to be ready to try and capture those Vikings as they micro around with their range as their best benefit there. But if you know, you can. And you don't necessarily need Corruptors to handle that. Uh, but that aside, we have a little problem, as we see there are no detectors. Oh, there's one. Yeah, there's literally one. Spore Crawler survived everything. And this is such a, actually a dangerous play. This is such a dangerous play from Ryung. Only his ghosts on the front line. Cloaked, yes, and bullying the army, as you saw, just got deleted. But if the rest of the army came with a fungal or two, uh, all those ghosts deleted in the blink of an eye would also have been very, very bad. As it is, Gamble worked out, only lost a couple of more ghosts there, but traded out for a lot, lot more units, some lost mining, and 11 more drones. Rung still with the stronger bank, particularly in the mineral counts, while well, again, he does get that bottom left base up and running. Was a little late to it, because other things were happening, actually. Probably could have already been dropping mules, but looking around to it. Meanwhile, big engagement in the middle of the map. Fungal on mostly Marines, actually. Parasitic Bomb on all of these air units, but most of the Liberators, not the Vikings, which actually, in the number of Liberators there were, they were contributing to the air. And perhaps I am mega giga wrong here. Ryung might actually win a TVZ versus Solar. Solar just completely caught by surprise. The audacity of the Terran jumping on top of all those spellcasters certainly caught me by surprise. And Solar was not ready to go because ideally what happens there is that Ryung balls up his army clearly making a move. And then Solar pops a fungal, runs away, pops a fungal, runs away, pops a fungal, runs away to try and get a better engagement. But he just was caught totally by surprise. Everything came out at once, and yes, it did damage. It didn't actually kill a lot of things, and, well, it didn't kill things faster than Ryung's army was killing him. Ryung drastically improving his TVZ, certainly in the late game, at the very least. We did see that he had problems in the mid-game. That was not the best mid game I've ever seen from a Terran player, but his build and his strategy really was going towards this stage, apparently, anyway, right? 4cc super, super quickly, and then trying to get to that late game without dying first. That was successful, and Ryung takes game one versus Solar. Game two is going to be on to Asaini. In the top right, up one, he is Ryung. In the bottom left, we do have Solar. So, like I said, the, the overall strategy seemed to have worked out for Ryung. There were... Certainly, problems. 
as far as his unit usage. <laughs> uh, decision making, unit decision making, I suppose. Uh, when it came to the mid game, it was a very, very brief mid game. When you consider mid game as not a, a, a time thing, it's not, you know, seven to 12 minutes or whatever it could be, I suppose, but rather a, uh, a situation. Let's say mid game is three CC, around three, four CC up until you get your um, additional command centers, like you throw down plural command centers. That's how I would describe it for Terran players, I guess. Uh, and that was very limited. <laughs> that was super small. And in that small portion, Ryung was not very good. He lost a, a tremendous amount of units, and what I would still say was not worth it. The resources loss was not great in a TVZ, and it certainly, like I said, didn't gain him, gain him any momentum or really cause a lot of chaos, you know, kind of the outside of the, the numerical equations that can still impact the StarCraft game. It just seemed like a waste. But it didn't matter because, like I pointed out, Ryung was getting back maxed out almost as fast as Solar was. <laughs> like, he at least took some time to die <laughs> with his eight racks, four CC, going on five CC economy. He was like, oh, well, I didn't even mean to play that anyway. I didn't even want to play mid game. Whatever, man, I don't even care. And he got no super, super late game. And so Solar didn't have nearly as many opportunities, I think, to show that he can often be a better player in the early and mid game. I would still overall consider him a better player in the late and very late game, but uh, Ryung played that out, uh, I mean, close to perfection, the, the late to late late game, you know, like when you like like someone, it's a late late game. I mean, Solar was also clearly surprised by the... Uh, forwardness of Ryung. <laughs> it was just, you know, there's a certain expectation, I suppose, at that state where you're, um, you're thinking the Terran player will almost never move out against me, you know? And then a bunch of ghosts suddenly did, and he's like, what the hell? Lost all those units. And then he had this great late game army, but, uh, whoops, it is he. Wasn't expecting the jump from the Terran. And you know what? I talked about how the dynamic of a Viking-based Terran player can be dealt with but wants to be scouted. I'm not actually sure Solar scouted it, which might have contributed to him being even more surprised by the way the engagement happened, because he wasn't expecting so many air units to be able to dive bomb in a concave, to be fair, but still dive bomb onto his air. If he had, he might have played um, more cautiously, basically, like made sure he had healers on the forward positions to, again, throw out those fungals and buy time until he could figure out what to do. So, yeah, uh, I mean, Ryung plays a uh, very greedy game, first of all, right? His 3-3 was finished, I think, before 9 minutes, something like that. I don't even know. But very macro-based game. Doesn't have the strongest mid-game, but even that is almost, like, um, unexpected, you know? When so much of what we talk about in the TDZ matchup is, uh, is how the mid-game goes. And depending on who you cast, I guess, maybe you think more late game, but... Anyway, um, and so the mid game just not being really there probably surprised Solar, and then the late game was just uh, surprisingly well done by Ryung, and then the late late game, completely different pacing, completely different. Now this is a two fact build from Ryung. After third CC, I'm really happy to see that he didn't go Cyclones first, as we all know I'm a I'm a big hater on that on that particular opener. He might go Cyclone second. And that's still not the, the best anti-Ling defense you'll ever have, but I like it. I like it a lot. Clearly mech, by the way. It's not going to go two fact into blue flame into bio, which is kind of a thing. Nope, third factory is on the way. Cyclone upgrade is on the way. The Hellions will present a very neutral front. Like, this is, this is totally normal, right? Nothing weird is happening. In this game, Solar did lose his Overlord, so he did get uh, punished as he... Like I said, usually is very wary of versus other Terrans. He's usually very conservative with his overlords, but this time around he wasn't again, and he was punished and like doubly so because something sneaky is happening. It's one thing to be punished on the overlord positioning when it's a typical 3cc into bio, which you can kind of guess the rhythm to as a Zerg player. Like, well, I'm pretty sure it's third CC and I'm pretty sure it's bio. And so I'm pretty sure I have to be prepared by six and a half minutes, you know? This is actually very different because your preparation is just different, isn't it? 
compared to a 16 marine drop, in which case queens and lings will probably do the, the gist of the, the job, but up against mostly cyclones. And that is now what Rung is going into as he again presents a very normal front. Four Hellenes driving around, two Hellenes left behind to guard against the run by. Six Hellenes is not suspicious. Eight Hellenes would not be suspicious. And so Solar has no idea that it is mech, that it is mostly Cyclone, and that it is coming across the map right now as once again the Ling Scout is denied. Might have barely glimpsed that third Hellene, but that is still not enough of a tell. Some Roaches are on the way, but Roaches are not going to do particularly well here. If it was Blue Flame, then more power to you. Yeah, the Roaches have to be in position. But this is not about positioning. This is about actual army counts. These Cyclones are going to be great at trying to tackle each individual higher quality unit, I suppose but lower quantity and so we do need that uh, that quantity up there nine more roaches on the way should do the trick ryung is going to control the battlefield for now but roach speed not being done and not really any lings seven of them hardly counts there's not too much of a fear for this army to be surrounded it looks like rung is going to uh, play it cautiously i suppose run back home He's getting a fourth CC, he's getting blue flame, he's getting two more factories. He's setting up very well regardless. But he probably could have positioned himself there for a while longer. But playing the, the guessing game with Roach Speed is a little dangerous. And not just Roach Speed, but again, if the Lings had managed to grow in number and had a back attack, that's dangerous. Four Cyclones all by their lonesome. Extremely dangerous if there were Lings, but there just simply aren't. Hive is on the way for Solar, sub seven minutes. Spire is on the way. As he eyes a potential very fast Greater Spire transition, hoping to catch a mech player completely off guard. And while Cyclones do shoot up, they're still not very good against Broodlords. Upgrades only just now starting for Solar. He's going double attack upgrades as we... I think that meta was developed like four years ago at this point versus a cyclone meta actually different cyclones different maps different players <laughs> all that type of stuff but yeah and then uh, we did have a strong fungal period and then a strong viper period against cyclones but talking about old old days anyway um, but no greater spire plus a couple of fungals if they come down could be a great combination of units, that is, until Ryung starts adding in Thors. Which he might actually be very close to doing, because once again, he could be playing a game that is identical in its pacing to the last. Bio and Mech do have different pacing most of the time. You know, Mech does a little more of the skipping of the mid-game, even if it is... Well, I guess if it's Cyclone-focused, then maybe not as much, but... Anyway, we, we do expect them to be a little bit different. But what both can do, apparently, like last game, is say, like, here's the early game, here's some Hellions, here's some medevac drops. Here's the mid game, here's some pushes, here's some drops. Maybe it goes terribly, and in this case, it's not going terribly as much as Rung just isn't doing anything. And then, bam, here's the late game. I, I, I skipped my Marauders, basically. I went to 15 Ghosts really quickly. In this case, you could basically skip your maxed out tank style, which he's actually not really adding on very many tanks at all, going back into Cyclones, and then go into, like, Mass Thor. But Mass Thor is a lot better when it does have a lot of upgrades. And while second armory was slapped down, it still is it be used. There we go. But I'm just uh, I'm just throwing it out there because you know what, Ryung should be yeah, wary yeah. of you know question mark technology at this point. He's the infestation pit, so a hive is very likely. I mean, it could have been first for infestors, but a hive is likely. And then if it's a hive, it could be a greater spire. Now it's not. Spire is still a spire. We have corruptors that were made for, well, right now, no reason, actually. It's not very common to see too many liberators along with this push. Could happen, but still, imagine running all those corruptors over these cyclones. So the Greater Spire was almost certainly his intention, but it's only coming down now. And, you know, I said Thor, but Ryung does like his starport play. And I don't think Solar is going to be anticipating that yet again. He does uh, worry about the incoming mech push, which is a surprising number of Cyclones. Really, the tanks, the supplement here. Eight of them see chopping forward. You got to respect, but then 31 Cyclones you don't want to accidentally run into. 
Especially with nothing to successfully trap them. I mean, the Lings don't have too much opposition. Funnily enough, not a lot of Hellings or Hellbats. But you still want to make sure that they get, like, on top of the units, which could still be a struggle. With that many Cyclones and their still instantaneous re-lock-on. I mean, they're, they're kind of okay against dealing with Lings, actually. <laughs> uh, and the tanks will fire on the Lings anyway, like, preemptively, right? So yeah, the Lings aren't a solution, and they get, uh, there's no Fungals. So there's nothing to lock these Cyclones in place. Solar is still buying time to get to Broodlords, and there's not a direct answer to them as of yet, but the Viking count is growing. Banelings looking for the SCVs will miss the chance to kill the Planetary. Nine SCVs go down. Not really worth all of those units there for Solar, but he also wanted to give away supply. Probably for more Broodlords, I was thinking, but actually 38 Lings and 12 more Banelings. Doesn't have a lot of time here as the Cyclones inch closer, looking for some hatchery kills. Denied so far. The Viking count now going to be at 5 against really no anti-air. So just keep that in mind. Only the Queen's able to provide any support. And then you don't want to provide those uh, those Cyclones a chance to lock on to the Broodlords here. Broodlords can only be so courageous, I guess. But then they don't want the Cyclones. The Cyclones don't know what they're running into. Again, Fungals could be an issue. I don't know why. These like, particular moments where Broodlords really look very fast. Sometimes they look kind of normal. I mean, sometimes it really looks like they got a speed boost, which they did. That's it. Uh, so this looks like a really good moment for Solar. He's like, yes, I got the Broodlords against someone who's not really prepared to deal with Broodlords, but that time is kind of a lie. The Vikings already out are enough. As you see, the Broodlords got way too far forward. So there's not even the Vipers to help out, and clearly no Queens. not coming this far forward. So SCVs are pulled, army is pulled back, the Vikings left to just do the job, and Solar has no answer for that. Meanwhile, actually, a lot of the army went off the left side. Now is jumping on top of the hatchery of Solar, possibly even into the natural. Ryung's economy barely touched, still on six bases almost. That's scouted by Solar. He knows that he's in trouble as far as the late game comes in. Wants to take a good fight against this army. A couple of blinding clouds take some tanks out of the equation, but nice tank positioning, actually. And the Cyclones, they just don't, they don't get locked down. They all microed out of the way, and now we're chasing the rest of the roaches down. Solar has a bank to replace all of this, but now he's replacing really subpar units into better and better mech units because upgrades are continuing to form here for the Terran. And the Cyclones are just so maneuverable. Solar has no answer to this, and now he's going to be going down his own chokes against the Cyclone tank squad. The Vikings still controlling the air. Should he try to once again go into Corruptors or add on those Vipers? And this is just a disaster. Ryung is going to 2-0 Solar. Maybe not right now as their supplies do even out, but it does feel eventually. This game is not looking good at all for Zerg. Rung is on 6-7 bases, actually. Not too far away from jumping towards his gold as well. Vikings now... Oh my god, it's been a long time since I've seen this because Terrans do not go Vikings very much anymore. But there is a very cool game you would never be able to find again. Where Gumiho literally only had Vikings left over after a catastrophic engagement with Mech. And that's actually how he won. He perpetually supply blocked the Zerg player, and there's nothing the Zerg could do about it. Very funny, very old, and uh, I did try and find it once and I couldn't. But yeah, he could actually continue trying to do that, because literally it's only Queens stopping him. Queens on spores that he could dodge away from. Even if Vipers appeared, one pair of bomb and Mech are away from it. Waste of energy, if you ask me. But Ryung does pull them back. Now using them to do a little bit of scouting on the positioning of the army. Both players maxed out yet again, but it's that quality that I was talking about. Where Solar, I mean, Ravagers increased the quality of his army, but without his ability to actually lock down the Cyclones, you're just doing the same thing over and over again. You're going a little insane. The Vipers can sometimes get those abducts to change the tide of the battle with so many Cyclones. It's like, how many, how many abducts do you need? 20? I'm really shocked to see that Solar, not a big fan of the Shark Fester, apparently. Last game, they did get in Festers, but they were just all in a clump, basically. Didn't try to spread them around, didn't really get to that kind of uh, pace of a late, late game TVZ, I suppose. And then here, everyone's tried going into in Festers, which I would actually say is not too uncommon nowadays. You do see a lot of Zerg players up against Battle Mech, so-called, go into Vipers and just try and get some good engagements and then eventually apply pressure to their opponent. Or, like in this game, try and go into Broodlords, but... 
Um, I'm gonna harp on it. Once again, I feel like investors would be helpful. <laughs> but, nope. Still none on the way. Liberator harassment now going to be a problem. Do they have lib range? Not yet. Still an issue, though. And Ryong did go ahead and hop over to that gold base, which is now properly protected by the tanks. Little Sim City as well is getting into Ghost. That's why you see a bio upgrade on the way. A little surround wasn't going to work out with this positioning that Ryong has. And the army now caught totally off to the right side. Is nowhere close to defending this left side. Now rallying forward piece by piece. Scan ahead, sees that it's enough to defend. Ryong's not going to try and tackle that or overextend. Just pull backs and wait another day, right? Thors, yes. I mean, Thors are pretty freaking good. All right. Like I said, they're basically the best, though, when they are fully upgraded. You don't really want to mass Thor when you're still only on 1-1. One, one. But as we are now really into the late game of the mech, I do think, you know, basically mass Thors is a good way to go. Can't just go A-moving with mass Thor against the world's... Well, one of the world's top five Zerg, let's say that way anyway. But um, that's what he's not doing. He is adding on Thors, but he's also adding on Ghosts. He's even adding on a Raven, which I really like, so that's going to help detect any Shark Festers that do occur. But then it's also going to add an anti armor Missile, which I think would be very effective. And then uh, upgrades. You know, Cloak for the, the Ghost, as well as, again, upgrading the armor. Since you're using the Ghosts for their spells, not the regular attack. Vipers will come in, get a blind cloud, two of them, and an abduct, but they will lose their lives in the process. One orbital does go down as well, but Ryung is very capable of replacing that. Still 2,500 minerals in the bank, and, well, frankly, just a lot of extra command centers anyway. So, Solar is continuing to expand, trying to get the strongest economy possible, trying to get multiple engagements so that one can finally go very, very well for him as really no engagement has gone super well for him. Maybe they've been okay, like this one here is maybe okay. Uh, maybe not actually, I take that back. <laughs> nope, he's definitely going too far forward. Definitely too far forward. Only kills six SCVs on the gold base. Hardly an opening. What is Solar's real plan here? Usually you see something being built up behind this, but it seems like the plan is just continue, continue to try and hammer Terran's uh, forces, defensive positioning, and hope that it works out. Sometimes that's fine. Sometimes that is totally fine for a Zerg player to do, especially when they find that one opportunity that really causes a lot of chaos, and the Terran player suddenly is scrambling to get into every single base that they have to defend. But so far, that has not happened. Ryung is close enough to defend his bases, to at least defend the majority of his base, or to get some revenge if his base does end up dying. And as far as Solar getting any further bases off to the right side, I think that is a little bit of a pipe dream. This does seem like it's going to be killed very, very soon, even if Solar comes to defend it, because you are talking about some very easy-peasy siege hopping of the mech player. They have tanks still around elsewhere, trying to hold off on any openings given to the Zerg, of course, but still a decent amount of supply they can throw off to the right side. And we could eventually also have lib range become an issue, still not getting to that fusion core, but we could. In which case, spores will not cover the mineral lines totally and completely. This map is actually decent about that, to be fair. To be fair, but it's still annoying. And we could have nukes, which is actually 100% what we're getting. As the base has once again fall off to the left side. Well, I guess we, that, that's the first time it's actually fallen. The Sim City had fallen previously, I suppose, and now it's down just an orbital replacing it, so certainly not the strongest stronghold. It's a bit redundant. <laughs> strongest uh, fortress there. And the, the right side base did get killed. Seemed inevitable. Almost a, uh, almost a certainty, and, and so Solar would try and get that and get as much droning down there as possible before inevitably it dies. Or maybe even just buying time, but that command center is clearly looking to take that on. Solar hoping to find a weak point while Ryung focuses on the right side. Once again hits that fourth base, this time in orbital, but so much of the army is there that not much more will happen. And as an orbital, now it can lift, so there is that. Doesn't, uh, you know, shouldn't die, I guess, not against the composition we're currently seeing. Ryung is starting to run out of minerals, to be fair. 18 SCVs went down. Lost mining, has to plant it back. He's had to use some of his orbitals to replace bases, which then have died, or to use a Sim City, which then have died. So seven orbitals, still pretty strong, but 
Really needs to get a chance to slap down those mules. So far not happening as his uh, base is once again under attack, but Solar not going to commit, and he really shouldn't. The rest of the army was there to defend the planetary, which could be repaired up, and that is not going to be going down anytime soon. Rung, I think, just letting this be the weak side of his base. That is a little concerning, because that's a weak side that very quickly enters into your production being camped, but you do kind of have to choose one weak side, one strong side. And decides that this right is the strong side. Ghost could be caught off as they try and get the EMPs. They actually miss, so the Viper will still get a pretty nasty blinding cloud. I think there's enough Terran forces to hold on. Last second split as well. Fungal coming in far too late to really make an impact. And in fact, just making those Infestors give up their lives for mostly nothing. Planetary is still holding as well. Now this base is also going to be strong as it gets those mules dropped. And it's also going to be a bouncing off point for the Terran forces to catch yet another Infestor. Siege up in that choke. And Solar might be able to remax faster than his opponents, but what is he remaxing with and what is he remaxing into? A very strong position of the Terran. Ghost leading the charge, doing the scouting, dragging back the army into the tanks. Drones are feeling very comfortable or safe here. There's a bit of a distraction, however, as Ryung takes on some link damage. He does miscontrol some of his Vikings and Cyclones. Now this base is certainly next to fall. I think we have some of those nukes, by the way. Oh, uh, no. Actually, we don't. I thought he got two, and then maybe I missed when he used them. The attempted break them could be coming in here, but the Viper was unable to slap down a blinding cloud. However, the Ravager still managed to take down almost all of the tanks. A little bit of a depth to them, to be fair, but Ryung is in a dangerous position, honestly. His supply is no longer at that kind of critical mass, just under 150. He's lower in army supply overall as well, of course, but he also has no gas bank, so... He's actually been pretty okay as far as reinforcing, albeit a bit slower than his opponent. Now he's not okay with reinforcing. He does need to start taking better engagements. 9,000 resources in the hole. The planetary does fall. No more gas over on that right side. Fifth base never actually got back to mining and has been denied gas since the planetary fell, I'm pretty sure. So that is Rung's major problem. On the flip side, Solar has a mineral problem and has plenty of gas. 75 drones do need to spread themselves out a little bit more. As you see, he was oversaturated at the gold base, for instance, but they are starting to spread themselves out. Of course, also kind of stealing minerals from Ryung. And uh, particularly gas, particularly gas. If you get this rich Vespian, that would be so much nicer. Not gonna happen, however. Ryung really focusing on the right side once again, trying to get a command center and orbital this time set up, so it's not going to help in his defenses, but it will be able to lift. The, the upside to it, Solar's basic lair tech army has done a pretty good job. Vipers occasionally coming in for some good spells. Infestors seem to have been made and forgotten. They died without doing very much, and so Solar's like, eh, forget it. He'll probably be forced to go into Infestors just because he has... Such a bigger gas bank to his minerals. I did think Ryung had this game eight minutes ago. But I was wrong. Solar was able to strike back, finally find the Terran having more open weaknesses as Ryung tried to spread out his army. Little Sim City to help out the initial part of this engagement, but unfortunately no EMPs, meaning the blind clouds come down. Ryung forced to disengage, but he is running back into quite the depth of tanks, and Solar is actually staying around far too long. He was looking for some of those corrosive biles to damage or kill the tanks, but they really didn't come down fast enough. And his army was all types of bunched up right there. Drones are also going down because that wasn't the entirety of Ryung's army, and Solar makes a huge mistake. He takes a bad fight as he actually also takes tons of economic damage because that is this base down, this base out mining, and this base also getting some harassment on it. Solar was mineral starved to begin with. Now he has lost all of his minerals and not able to remax off of the amount that he had. And he's really mining very, very slowly. You can see Ryung dropping some mules, now mining better than his opponent. Solar's going to try and stop that. Jumping on top of this with Lings. Tank is a goner. Command Center could go in the blink of an eye with these Cracklings, but the Terran army is here. So Solar might sacrifice the Lings to try and get that snipe, but it might not be worth it because, yeah, it could just lift. anti armor Missile once again coming in to help out the Cyclones, mostly using their lock-on to be fair, but 
every so often using the regular attack. The parasitic bomb is almost kind of funny looking. It's like, well, there are some air units, so fuck you. <laughs> the Raven does get killed. And it's not that Rung is, is really going to be eager to replace because it is so gas heavy. And he doesn't have the gas. He was just about to resaturate the gases up to the top, and he has about a thousand there. And then he was denied it. Now he hasn't gotten back to clicking on the SCVs appropriately. That's kind of a bummer. But he does have these gases, and these are fresh gases. So 4,000 gas available on the uh, 3 o'clock. We'll call that one. Solar has gotten back to some decent mining himself. Finally back to this base at the very least, as well as the rich Vespian geyser. But again, minerals are his problem. And he really just needs a fresh base. That is just what he needs. He has mined out most of his bases. A 15,000 resource difference. It's got to mostly be because of this engagement right here. That was just a disaster. I think Solar saw a potential opportunity to actually snowball because he was like, oh, there's only so many tanks left over. You know, they're not really helping each other so much. And if there was 30 links on top of those tanks, then he might have been right about that. But he just overstayed drastically. So as I think I, uh, before that, I said 9,000. Now it's 15,000. I think it's mostly because of that. And he did lose drones at the same time. So just that, that 30 second span really, really ruined Solar's momentum because he had it. He had some good things going for him. And now it's back to a, uh, I suppose, anyone's game. But I am leaning towards Ryung as he finally has the base up and running and apparently not so much protected as just it's not being looked at. And Solar is literally running out of minerals to mine from. That is the biggest issue, isn't it? He's also finally expended his gas, which he can actually fix. To be fair, he has enough drones. Well, maybe not anymore. He just lost 11. He has rich fest being got. Well, more drones are going to go down. <laughs> well, actually, uh, this is a big problem. Mining in general is a big problem for solar. Blue flame hellions really worth a lot in this situation because even if the drones don't die exactly, they turn into hell bats. These lings are the first thing to arrive. That is a waste of minerals. And uh, 21 drones in total with the base looking like it's going to go down as well. Broodlord's looking like a very, very, very desperate attempt at this point. I think Ryung saw the Corruptors put two and two together, starts to build some Vikings, plus they can help out versus the Vipers anyway. Whatever one. And uh, now that scan does confirm Broodlords are on the way. He only needs so many Vi Vikings, actually. He only needs so many. I mean, you're kind of guessing at what the Zerg bank is. You're always guessing from both players, but I guess my bias is going to reveal itself when I say that as far as... When I play Zerg, I almost always predict the Terran is out of money. When I play Terran, I always predict the Zerg has tons of money. Just the way you go when you're up. Looks like you have more of the map than I do, I suppose. But anyway, you're guessing. But you're guessing with some context clues, right? Like the Remax wasn't very fast. They didn't attack me this repeatedly, so they might not be Remaxing at all. And well, that was only so many Broodlords being made at once, where if this guy was rich, there'd be, you know, 20 Broodlords being made at once. And so, I guess you could kind of start guessing that they're really not going to be able to provide the, a, a actual Broodlord Corruptor army. This is going to be an addition, not the focus. And the scans coming down again, are, are confirming that. And they're also confirming that every Corruptor, or almost every Corruptor, is being turned into a Broodlord. So there's really very little anti-air. There's the Viper and Infester. That's it. So how many Vikings are going to be necessary to deal with that? Seven's actually pretty good. Especially if you have a little more freedom to micro with it. The, the, the Fungal will take away that freedom, of course. And that's kind of the most worrisome thing. The Shark Fester scan multiple times. Rung knows about it. Uh, Cyclone's actually getting caught off here. A little too brazen for their own good. A little bit of a freebie, but at the same time, the Broodlord's now left undefended. The Viper is dying before they get their spells. One Parasitic Bomb is going to be it. That could be my crit against, that could be my crit against, that could be my crit against. Uh, but of course, Ryung also trying to focus on other things, sieging his tank, spreading his army, avoiding the fungals. He comes back in with enough bike to take on the Broodlords, which really weren't doing a whole lot of damage anyway, to be honest. And that is going to be that. Ryung with, I think, the upset of the group. Because everything else, every other player in this group could have beaten other players, right? But I really thought Ryung was in his worst matchup right off the bat. No warm-up, no momentum building. Ryung's TVZ is his worst matchup of the last four years or whatever it is. But he played 
really good macro games. 30 minutes just about, and I'll sign you here. And so Solar actually enters into this GSL group in which she was probably looking at Hero and Cure as the real contenders, losing to the underdog. That does not put him into a good position. Let's see what happens between the next set of players, Cure versus Hero, coming up. The second preliminary match is going to be between the top left player, Cure, and the bottom right player, Hiro. Now, this should be a good one, but I also believe that it should be Cure favored. Cure's TVP, I believe, remains the best, um, even though, like, Clem's TVP is also very good. And Maru's TVP is all, you know, everything that Maru does is very solid and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's still some of the best. So, unfortunately for Hero, even though he's a really cool Protoss, Kira is just usually very good at, at winning TVPs, regardless of the type of game that they are. Macro, micro based, early game cheeses, proxies, so on and so forth. But it's, uh, you don't really expect necessarily for Kira to be the one proxying. When I said proxy, I absolutely meant Hero. Like the proxy gates or, you know, proxy stargate or something like that. But it is Cure. Uh, fortunately for Hero, he is scouting for a proxy barracks, but that looks kind of like more of a scout for a, uh, like a Reaper proxy, maybe? I mean, he scouted this, which would be the more common Reaper proxy, to be fair, but it's a very limited, very greedy scout, if you will. Scouting is the opposite of greed, sure, but this is a greedy scout if you're to call 1-1. One, one. Could have gone a little bit farther over there. Could have gone a little bit farther over here. And he might have been able to see it. Now, the Zealot is on the way, but what really is going to be the concern is whether or not he cancels it. This is a uh, safety Zealot, shall we call it, sometimes. But he is uh, not canceling it for the Nexus, so never mind. So this is still a... Uh, it's a unit that's going to help, but... It's not even going to be in position, so... And this isn't Marines. They do have a gas coming up behind this, so Marauders are on the way. Bunkers will be slapped down, and the really unfortunate thing here is that, yeah, the Zealot was made, but then it's sent out, right? The really unfortunate thing is that the forward-placed gateway to get the Zealot across a little bit faster, to then also protect your natural from something more, you know, later aggressive, like a Hellion opener, for instance, is weak to this. The bunkers can now be positioned in a way which probes can't get a good surround. The pylon is now vulnerable as well, and it's a pylon that's going to power your gateway, your gate, uh, warp gate, and a potential shield battery. The zealot obviously sees that something is amiss, and heroes tries to react as fast as possible, cancels the nexus, was building a bunch of shield batteries, but also needs pylons. And, well, frankly, just needs units. One stalker barely going to survive here. No bunkers being placed down as of yet, but the marauders can still utilize this choke to the best that they uh, can. Actually, some decent micro going down here so far. The probes can always mineral walk through those marauders to get a very effective surround. And the shield batteries are going to finish. I wonder if the pylon would have been a better target. I mean, it's possible that Kira was so busy microing elsewhere, they didn't even realize these weren't any additional pylons. Because then he absolutely could have gotten this kill. But it is what it is. Three stalkers going to be available, but that's still a hefty number of marauders. Things are not over quite yet. As that was also killed on this side of the map, as I believe the SCVs did sacrifice some of their lives for it, but ultimately got the job done. Six of them did die. No Simon X core means no more stalkers. Sentry is going to maybe barely not be able to. Yes, it's going to be able to come out as the Marauders refocus onto the stalkers, which uh, are not being healed enough by the shield batteries on occasion. There you go. They're almost down to a two shot situation. That one last Marauder coming in here is going to help out. The probes get pulled once again, but it looks like it might just be too late as the pylon now does get focus fired. And that is it for the gateway production. A immortal is on the way. If that thing could pop out, it could be huge. But I'm afraid that there's just still too many marauders at the end of the day. Probes trying to go back for a little bit more mining before they are once again forced to be pulled. This sentry is hardly helping. A little tickle machine right here. A little tickle tickle. Probes trying to get those last couple of shots, and they do, but they're also losing so many of their lives. And it is a one base versus one base scenario in which Hero, I mean, yes, the Immortal might win now, 
No, it's actually not even gonna win. Nope, nope, definitely not. I was gonna say, he might be able to get a War Prism, but I wasn't even sure about that, because he has lost so many minerals. And he will just uh, go ahead and lose the game. That is it. Cure is double proxy. Works out. Cheeses the usual cheeser. And gets a quick game one victory. In the top right, up one after a cheesy two racks. It is Cure. And in the bottom right, that was the top left. Don't worry about it. Oh, bottom right, it is, it is Hero. We're now on to Golden Aura. And Hero just got cheese, man. Hero might have done his homework, and maybe Hero uh, does like to open up a best of on that map with a forward gateway. But um, if that is the case, then good homework and, and great, you know, counter build to it. But then there was, I feel like, a chance for Hero to actually hold, to be fair. Like, I don't think that was... I, I Hard counters, I personally believe, are very, very rare. Like, a hard counter as in, if you go X and I go Y, Y always wins, no matter what you do. I think those are very rare in StarCraft. There are definitely things that are supposed to be other things, but then execution is always a factor. And execution isn't usually a question mark when it comes to the professionals. But most of the time, it's a soft counter, right? And I do feel... Like, Kira had a soft counter, because Hero was kind of close to holding on. Now, although is that because Kira missed an opportunity to kill a pylon? Maybe. But then, regardless of that, didn't happen. Could have Hero pulled probes faster. Or maybe brought a Zealot back, even. You know, that tanks a lot of Marauder shots. Uh, and then actually managed to hold. Maybe. There, there is a maybe there. But I do think that that is a very difficult build to hold. Almost impossible if the Terran does correctly, I guess. For Protoss player who forward gateway positions. And it's not something that a Protoss player will often do versus Terran, but absolutely can do. And then we saw what happens when it happens. So a hero might be thus now deterred from ever opening such a way, which means that Cure has gotten rid of some of the obnoxious openers. If he planned on doing a cheese into macro, he's actually the one still doing obnoxious openers. And Cure, I would say, is typically more well known as a macro guy. So he has certainly turned the, the narrative around here. If you said that Cure vs. Hero had two cheeses and they were pretty quick and, and easy, you'd be like, oh, Hero did it? <laughs> nope, it's Cure. Factory coming in in proxy. I mean, he is still going to factory expand off of this, which is a little unique. But it is still a proxy factory and it is going to float. I was, I was like... Well, they could proxy starport, obviously, but then, you know, you don't really have to do that. But, oh, yeah, you can float. And that's exactly what he's doing. He is floating the factory on over. It's, it's, a Protoss player is never going to have its buildings over there. That is for sure. It's possible they will check for this if they have recently been cheesed. If you have this happen to you once, you check every single time you play on this map for the next 10 games. It's just... You almost never get cheese like this. So the Wood of Mines will pop out, and Hero is is pretty likely, I would say, to go into a Twilight Council opener. It's possibly goes into a Stargate. It's possibly goes into a Robo, I guess. But Twilight Council is pretty freaking common, and Twilight Council is going to give you some of that latest scouting that you can get. So this is good for Cure. That's uh, that's where that's where we're at right now. Uh, he is having some difficulties versus the pressure, but that just means that Hero isn't paying attention, and Hero really isn't paying attention. Too late to the paying attention right there. The Wood of Mine is going to pop off. Last second split from Hero does negate, you know, most of the damage, I suppose. But he can only do so much with these Stalkers, or at least I thought he would only be able to do so much. Yes, there are four Marines, and SCV pool, I was going to say, should fix most problems. But uh, this is some good control. The Adept blocking the fronts, tanking most of the damage. The Stalkers obviously micro away, two-shotting all of the units you see before you. Probes and SCV is going down. The problem is that that Robo still is not finished. And more probes are dying to the Wood of Mines. More minerals are not being mined. As Kira does just concede the low ground temporarily and gets back to some decent mining. Gets a little jump on top of Hero. As Hero is paying attention in so many different places, he loses one soccer thanks to it. Doesn't kill the Marine in revenge either. Yes, he does, actually. What the hell? 
I don't know why that bunker did not soak that up, but it didn't. And now the Wood Mines are, are further placing themselves apart, so the Observer will take extra time to clean everything up. 15 probes have gone down, only one base mining, really not even that, as this game has gone on. And Kier does have two command centers, obviously, working on his upgrades as well. Actually, going Marauder slow first. It's, um... I mean, it's a very cheap and very fast upgrade, so it's not really a problem doing that first. If you think you might be under further trouble, and uh, maybe one of the concerns would have been a four gate follow up, but it's 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 like impossible to do, I guess, at this point. Um, by the time you get the four gate up, I guess you'll be able to afford it, kind of. But it is so difficult to afford. He is going to try and get a war prism and try and get some revenge, just because four stalkers in a in a war prism. And one shot SCPs. Plus, a warp prism is the scariest thing a Terran really has to worry about. That's uh, a singular unit, I suppose. The warp prism is the most terrifying thing. But Kira's opener was, unfortunately for Hero, far more effective. He was able to deny so much mining on top of killing probes, whereas Kira had his mining somewhat denied, but it wasn't, I mean, he didn't lose as many. And. He didn't have as much mining denied either, I think. Check that in the income advantage, I suppose. Spikes every which way we look, I suppose, but obviously now here with a substantial lead. Again, the only thing that's really worrisome is, I guess, I said a four gate, but I was also like, you can't really afford that. In general, the worry is a follow-up all-in. That's the better way to put it. So stalkers would be the concern, but you can see with the Marauder production having been the focus, he made sure to always produce that 100 mineral marauder. 25? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute, do I know StarCraft? I don't know if I know StarCraft. Anyway, uh, then he is going to be able to deny that many stalkers. Very quick recall as Hero realized he bit off more than he could chew. And the factory came back! What a dick. It floated away and then it came back. There's nothing stopping it from doing it again, actually. So the stalkers have to stay at home. Oh, it shot again! Are you kidding me? Ay ay ay. Well, this game is pretty much over, I gotta say. Uh, Temple Archives was slapped down because that is the most affordable option. <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. You're definitely not getting to third base anytime soon. So, you know, mass gateway is not going to work out without three base economy. Um, mass stalker doesn't work against the building marauder count. Uh, one base or, or two base disruptor like never works against professional Terrans. It's just too easy for them to microwave from the disruptor. So, yeah, storm, you know. And ideally with charge, obviously, they complement each other. One's minerals, one's gas. But we can't even afford that. <laughs> no charge along with this. He's just hoping that the War Prism control is, is massive. But I'm going to be honest, because I have the extreme power of replays, I am going to fast forward. I'm going to give Hero one chance to really impress me. There we go. Alright, he's ready. The Observer's tracking. The Observer's tracking. Observer's tracking. That should have been heard. It was. Scan. Uh, and uh, pretty effective storms. Not, not, not good enough. I, I don't even know how good they'd have to be to be good enough. They'd have to kill the entire army and an entire mineral line, and then it'd be good enough. Hero down, 35 supply, still stuck on two bases. Now, fully saturated on two bases, by the way, as I speak. Ghost Academy will be here, and so the... Wait a minute, those were never Blink Stalkers! Holy shit, I have just been assuming it this entire time. But of course he afforded the Robo instead of Blink initially. Oh my god. I didn't even put that together, honestly. Oh, jeez. Oh lord. <laughs> Woof! Well. Quick and easy feedbacks to deter that, but then what about the rest of the army? Storm still looking to happen. That's cool. That's awesome. You know, you kill the Marines with the storm, you damage the Marauders, the Immortals start one shotting the Marauders. That is the magic trick to this. Hero is going to be able to get his third base up and running. Apparently. 
And he's gonna try and move over into, I actually think Colossus, even though Disruptors are more of a, of a Hail Mary unit. Again, they are so difficult to do against a professional Terran. That a, a Colossus that is uh, uh, dependable is actually worth a lot more usually. Oh, jeez, Rick. Yeah, it's uh, one way or another, Kira is going to win this game. His 3cc is up and running, 4th cc is on the way. Yeah, superior upgrades will hold on to superior upgrades, which Storm don't care about. Storm don't care. But it's still something. And then ghosts. And I think Kira might even go ahead and wait till he's maxed out. Just to make it really easy. You can see how good Hero would play if he didn't take such damage in the early game. Really proper comeback. Oh, Jesus! Uh, chances being shown. So the Warp Prism is dangerously low on health. And Vikings are arriving, by the way. It is going to be in Disruptors? No, it's going to be into Immortals. But unfortunately, Immortals are also a little vulnerable to these EMPs. You're going to get their shields popped. One last storm, I think, in the pocket. Uh, no, two storms. Two storms in the pocket. War Prism no longer available. Two more EMPs still available for the Terran, which is going to be good enough. As the storms are not hitting. Oh, here come more storms, actually. Don't want to underestimate the storms. Cure coming in, just getting bathed. It's a good old bath for these sweaty Terran tryhard units, am I right? Jesus Christ, actually. Cure was ahead by about 60 supply, not only ahead by 40, but it's still ahead by 40. Yeah, still ahead. And Hero, I guess, imbuing his, uh, his classic side right now. He's actually trying to go into a fleet beacon. It's a bold choice, Cotton. No more shield battery energy means no more Archon, and this is a lot of injured units with no medevac healing. Another storm would work wonders right now, but there are no more storms. The last Immortal will fall as well, and Hero will not be able to recover from, I believe at one point was a 20 worker deficit, I want to say. At least 16. And that is that. Kira with the 2-0 will advance on to face Ryung in a TVT and Hero will face Solar as they often do in the online tournaments. So the winner's match is now upon us. In the bottom right, it is Ryung who 2-0'd Solar. And in the top left, it is Kira who 2-0'd Hero. Not the winner's match I was expecting. I was expecting Hero... Uh, to lose versus Kira, but I was expecting Ryung to lose to Solar. So instead of a TVZ final, uh, winners rather, we have a TVT with the losers match being a PVZ. Now, this would actually be, in my opinion, the, yeah, the best chance for Ryung to get to the round of eight GSL. His TVP can also be really good, but I think the point at which he gets really good at TVP is actually a point in which Hero would not let him get to if they were facing off in a best of three. He gets really good when he has like a max that army of Marauders and gets the really good con gives. But I don't think that's what Hero would let him get to. Uh, but his TVT is basically since his beginnings of a pro gamer has always been good. Now TVT might have changed I keep wanting to say the least, but I, I know I've said this before and then really had to think through all of the <laughs> meta cycles we had in every single matchup, but it's one that its its mechanics are still rather similar, I suppose, unless you talk about the Cyclone bullshit. If Cyclone bullshit happens, then that is clearly very different than any TVT that's ever existed in the past 14 years. But even with Ravens playing more of a part in today's TVT than they did in 2012, or people being generally better, of course, uh, in those two different years, or um, maps being very different uh, in the last 14 years. Um, what else would have changed? No, that's kind of it, actually. That's really, like, m everything else is really quite similar. From the um, kind of dependability of a, of a factory expand, like a more one base play compared to just always 1x expanding. That's always existed in TVT. Cheeses have always existed in TVT. Marine tank is still the staple. All the Ravens have changed it. Uh, even when you play mech, it's still mostly the same. Tank-based mech. Hellbats didn't really make that big of a change, at least once the drop Hellbat meta of Heart of the Swarm disappeared. 
So yeah, Ryung just always been good at the mechanical part of TVT. But that said, <laughs> Kira is still probably the second best TVT in the world. It's, you know, Maru, Byun, Kira, basically, and then Clem, if he's playing really well, I, I think could be up there, but he doesn't have as much history with the best Korean Terrans of the world. So it's, you know, I would say, I, I guess those three. Um, so Ryong is really good at TVT, but can he actually defeat Cure? I don't believe so, but I didn't believe in him defeating Solar either, and I was very wrong about that. So let's see what happens. Cure, always looking to be in Maru's shadow, usually gets as far as Maru in GSL, maybe a little bit farther, like last GSL didn't, didn't go so well for Maru. And uh, I would say he almost uh, usually gets out of the round of 16 in first place, I want to say. Wants to do so again. Nice, quick repair there from Ryung. He definitely showed some speed limitations in his TDZ versus Solar. I didn't really highlight them so much because they weren't as important as it was that he was doing an overall good job. And I really wanted to just accept being impressed by him rather than nitpick. But there definitely were more moments in the TDZ of Ryung versus Solar in which he took corrosive bile damage, didn't split against a parasitic bomb, whatever, right? So he does have some speed limitations, perhaps, as an older gamer. He's so old, am I right? Or just in general, he was never the fastest player, which I think is true. Um, but uh, didn't show it there. That was very, very quick. So far, pretty even as things go, but Cure does have more SEVs. He is also... Uh, he also lost Reaper, I guess, but more SEVs, so actually something that Ryung needs to worry about as time goes on. Third CC coming down quick for Cure as well, and a two burger difference is pretty substantial. Ryung's opener really would have wanted to deal some SCV damage by now, and instead, it might it might have caught Cure by surprise, but it was the opposite. Ryung, of course, able to go back home and quickly defend is the good news, but would have been lovely if he had been able to drop out first and gotten some damage on that medevac. What are you going to do? Fortunately, TY did come back from military like a year ago, but is already going to retire from StarCraft 2. So he's not been in the running for best TV tier for quite a few years. Cyclone, what are you, what are you looking at? You look in the wrong freaking direction. Dummy. Here's... Medivac drop hasn't found any damage, but that doesn't matter. He still has a three worker lead and he is finishing his third command center as Ryung starts his. Now that must mean that Ryung has some advantage somewhere. And he does. He's got two Reapers to zero, three tanks to two, but that's it. And that is not enough. That is not going to change things moving forward because that third tank being a little bit faster is not enough to make up for the travel distance natural to natural so it uh, doesn't look so good for Ryung unless he can get a really really amazing engagement Kira did not see Ryung's move out is the best news so far as Kira might at the very least be locked in on two bases he is now moving out at a pretty appropriate time, honestly, as long as he's able to siege up in time for Ryung's push. Because the most important thing is that he wasn't trapped in his own natural. And even then, with three Ravens to two, he might have been able to bust out. But now, he's not trapped in his own choke. He's got his tank sieged up, although this one is going to be in danger. This one probably is safe. Yes, yes it is. Then a nice start, at the very least, for Ryung, who is looking to take out this one. He will. He absolutely will. No interference mage is coming down from Cure to stop his second tank from falling, so he is now behind one tank, just straight up 5-2. to two. Ryung managing to find Cure. A little surprised by the push, by the angle. A little mistake on the Viking Micro, as I'm pointing out, Ryung does have some of those tiny mistakes that really do add up in a game like this, but we also have a drop, apparently. Kira is losing more SCVs as Ryung's Cyclone keeps gathering more and more, but at the very least, Kira is getting some return damage. It's just not enough. Six SCVs killed versus 15. Kira is now behind about five. 
So that's that's the kind of disappointing thing, though. <laughs> There's almost a 10-worker kill difference, but only a 4-worker lead for Ryung, as Kira's third CC was available just so much faster. Does need to rally correctly, but now that it is, it is also mining. So Kira... I mean, it's really not a great engagement for the Blue Terran. Like, there's just no getting around that. It's not, but it seems like he has decided to play it wise versus panicky. So, yeah, he, he took a pretty brutal blow to his tank count, but he didn't panic and try and defend when he maybe wouldn't be able to. So at least he still has his units defending his bases. Maybe not anymore, as the Marines jump on top of Kira's tank. They take down one, still safe from the second with that Disable active, and auto turrets actually didn't really play so much of a part. In fact, it's actually Ryung's lack of control on his Marines that end up getting them blasted. He was focusing on landing his Viking by the looks of things. Which does me now that his tanks are all alone, and that is a huge problem that Kira absolutely picks up on. Three Interference Matrix takes down three out of five of the tanks, with the fifth one not even involved in the fight and Ryung had overstayed his welcome. I don't think having the Marines live would have necessarily changed that totally and completely, but it would have helped if those eight Marines, one medevac, had been controlled correctly. Very unfortunate, as Ryung is unable to retreat with his tanks, he now will have trouble on his defense. Now he is the one without enough tanks to defend, as this one is also in trouble. He also does not have any Ravens. All of his air units are being picked off one by one, either by Kira's just superior air control or by Ryung's mistakes in his micro. And now Ryung, very close to dying. Okay, Kira also losing some of his own Vikings, but now his Marines are the real problem. SVs get pulled into the slaughter as Ryung just cannot hold on here. Combat shields will finish for Ryung, and that would have been so freaking helpful. But now he doesn't have the Marines to really use it. So... Ryung just doesn't have enough. That's just, that's just, the, that's, uh, there it is. <laughs> he might have combat shields, but he doesn't really have anything to use it with. He's significantly behind in the upgrades, and he is falling once again further and further behind on the economy. That last tank gonna be taken out, and with it, the third CC is now vulnerable. Ryung's attempt to break the tank line will not work. He just kills one. But there's more tanks behind that. And here will end up proving to be better. Ryung's one hopeful moment was him taking down two tanks for the price of some energy. That was amazing. But he maybe should have pushed that a little bit stronger to the north. That's the only thing I can really suggest as a not great Terran player. But someone with God Vision anyway. Because Kira didn't even have a tank there for the longest time. That's why that Cyclone was able to get so many SCV kills. If Ryung had tried to siege hop a little bit more forward, Perhaps he would have been able to, because the two tanks were not quite covering the entrance. I don't know. But he didn't. He didn't push the issue. He didn't kill even more SEVs, which would have turned this into a almost borderline all-in, I guess. And then he did let his tanks get all types of uh, left alone. Now a big old doom drop coming in to actually end the game. Nothing for Young to do against that. Even if this tank was popping, it wouldn't be able to help very much. And Kira's going to be coming in from two different directions very, very soon. Still has his Ravens as well to help out. Rung is not going to tap out yet. Gets a big old concave in that main base, but it is not going to be enough, apparently. Just too much firepower from Kira's army. And Kira will take game for one. Game two is going to be on Site Delta. In the top left, up one, he is Kira. In the bottom right, it is Ryung. He had one particularly good moments. And if Kira was the type to panic, perhaps Kira would have allowed that moment to become a game deciding moment in Ryung's favor. But even though it looked like Kira should have used his Raven energy to maybe stop that second tank from going down, he didn't. And perhaps that was very intentional. He was just choosing to be patient and, and wise as opposed to showing off his uh, speed, I guess. But I really, I mean, I'd have to look at it again, but it does really feel like there is a very weak natural that Ryung just wasn't confident in pushing. His tanks could have tried sea chopping. And he could have controlled some of his units better, for sure. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he would never have been able to pass through that natural totally and completely. And also was maybe afraid of a potential surround. Which would have happened if he had entered into his opponent's natural? I'm not sure, but it was a it was a brief, very exciting moment for Ryung fans. And then Kira just absolutely clobbered him. 
when the real engagement went down. And that just might be what happens between these two players. This was a best of seven. It might have been all four games. Young getting one or two very good looking moments with the positioning of TVT, which uh, I think that has never changed in this matchup, unless you're talking about Cyclones. But positioning has never really changed as far as its importance and the way that it's done with tanks and marines and vikings. So you might see Ryong get that moment, everyone gets really excited, and then he just can't quite push it. And Kira shows his mastery of the additional elements, such as macro, which he was ahead on, as well as uh, maybe like Raven control, which, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I want to say that Kira is more experienced in Raven control, because I think that might be technically correct, but, you know, Ryong, he missed 18 months StarCraft II by going to the military. And then it has never been like a, like a full-time pro, I guess. Like he's actually being kind of like a streamer and a bit of a commentator, like working with Crank on a couple of things. He did join Onside, but again, like it's never been comparable, I think, to Cure, basically. Um, but it, anyway, like it, 18 months, I guess, out of the equation during some of the, the Raven era, I guess. But I, know, I think you're kind of splitting hairs at that point. They're both very familiar with Ravens being important to the matchup. I think just in general, Cure is better. Very similar builds. Cure is uh, actually behind an SCV. <laughs> As Ryong decides to go for a very fast 3cc build, hoping to not be punished. Which I will say, it can be difficult to actually find the correct punishing maneuver against this 3cc build. I mean, it absolutely exists, but it can be difficult to find. A lot of TVTs, even amongst the pros, they'll be unable to get that definitive scout on the third CC being denied entry by a you know a cyclone or something like that and then they won't know they really push the issue and then they'll just kind of do their own thing they'll just go through their own motions you know a third cc but not nearly as fast and then suddenly they realize oh my god you're actually much faster to that okay let me try and make up for it take a couple of good engagements and they win anyway that's uh i think it's gonna happen <laughs> maybe cure does got the third cc though as he is going for a medevac drop and Ryung is not going into any Cyclone production whatsoever. So no Cyclones means you're going to have more problems defending against a drop harass opener. But it does also mean you have a stronger direct attacking force tank to tank. Now Kira also didn't go for a Cyclone, to be fair, but he still has some Marines and a Reaper looking to take advantage of the immobility of Ryung's army. One Viking does kind of change that a little bit, to be fair. That is Ryung, you know, instead of going for a Cyclone, he goes for a Viking. The Cyclone, he could have gone directly into a Raven. Viking's not out yet, but it'll be out. It's almost perfectly timed, really. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure Ryung should have enough units. There we go, there's a tank. He did actually swap a little bit, you can see. He swapped the tank tech lab off for the Raven. Wasn't expecting that, but that's the only reason it was even a little bit awkward. At the end of the day, Kira does lose his starting drop, and Ryung gets away with his 3cc, which, by the way, Kira didn't actually see. But here's the thing. Kira is pushing, so he didn't actually see the 3cc, but I think the number of units, or the timing of units... The starport, particularly, might have tipped him off a little bit? I don't know, it's actually kind of hard to say. Kira is going in double reactor, uh, double viking, though, and that is more than anything else the most important thing. And he is going double starport. Okay, so it's been a while since we've seen this, actually. But it was popular on Site Delta, I guess, when the map first arrived? Or maybe I'm thinking of the other map that was very direct natural to natural, but regardless, the two starport punish here should punish Ryung's position. Because Ryung needs to break out of a contain to really fully utilize his third CC. And that is going to be extremely difficult to do when your opponent has an almost identical number of tanks, actually a superior number of tanks, and an obviously superior number of Vikings. Now, if Ryung had gone into triple starport, he could have tried to bust out of this with really uh, sneaky Raven control, trying to come in from multiple directions, like auto turrets over here, and then SCV pull with Marines and tanks over here. He could have tried to obviously like full disable all the tanks as well, which probably would have been better. <laughs> Whatever, right? 
But he only went for Double Raven. So, it's a little more questionable in that regard. He does have faster barracks production. Much faster, obviously, than Kira, but just generally kind of quick. But then he can't get enough Marines very quickly to break out of this little, all easy peasy lemon squeezy. You need like 30 Marines with combat shields to break out of this tight choke here with ease. And he's not going to have combat shields for another 70 seconds, and he's not going to have that many Marines. What he could have are medevacs. And he is trying to get a medevac right now. Can't quite afford the second one or can't remember to. He actually could afford it. And he would usually want it because then you can send 60 Marines across the map or again, try and get a, a pincer maneuver going. Time is ticking away. Ryung knows this is going to be difficult no matter how he does it to break out and it will cost him. You just hope that the cost is worth the break. Oh no, I think he's gonna try and come in from one direction. Oh my God, no, this ain't gonna work. Oh, save the tank, save the tank. I said the Vikings land and I'm like, no, that's not gonna help that much. He needs to get the Ravens into really cute positions. He would love to get us around. He would love to be able to wait for combat shields, but he is not going to be able to. Command Center lifts, and he is going to try and break out of this. The Ravens do get some good positioning. Three tanks taken out of the equation. Auto turret, a little bit of a distraction, but those Vikings will land and slaughter most of the SCVs. The Liberators will siege up, and one or two tanks actually from Cure were still firing away. The Marine numbers were not high enough and a good enough concave. The tanks actually weren't on siege and joining the force, actually. I don't think they were anyway. And all together, that will be the end of the game. I think you actually did tell that it was a third CC build. Because, I mean, the other one thing you can do is just look back on your, on your own build and see where you're at compared to them. But then he also might have been planning to do this, as uh, I didn't see his exact moment of transferring a starboard onto the reactor. Which doesn't necessarily mean you're going to starboard, to be fair, but... If you're not going Ravens, then you're doing you're doing something a little bit uh, trickier, I suppose, and often aggressive, I guess. Ryung does finally get a drop out, but it's not having a full 16 Marine drop, and at this point, Cure does have some reinforcements. He's got three barracks at the very least. Ryung has five. His production's already set up, but he can't afford to produce all five barracks, all nine Marines. Math. I don't believe Ryung can come back. Rung would have to continue trying to base trade and hope that Cure never gets his defenses up and running. That is his best bet, because trying to break out again isn't going to work. He's going to lose so much army in the process if he even breaks out. I'm not sure that he will. He's not getting one shot by the tanks anymore, but there's still so many that, yeah, his marines are they're still getting demolished. Unfortunately, that will be it for Ryung's Winner match. But again, he managed to make it into the winner's match. He gets himself an extra life. It's Kira who will get the easy peasy road to the round of eight. 2 0, 2 0. Into the round of eight he goes. There you have it. I'm going to go ahead and check the exact scout. Just because I myself am curious. Here comes the drop. Yeah, I think the uh, the Viking. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the two two starport units for cure. Obviously, there should have been some starport unit already out. The starport had been delayed because of the third CC. That would have been enough. All right, GGs. Cure moves on, and Ryong waits for the winner of Hero versus Solar. The elimination match will start off on site Delta. Top left is Solar, who lost zero two to Ryong, and in the bottom right it is Hero who lost 0-2 to, to Cure. One is surprising, the other is not as much. Well, yeah, one that is surprising is the ZVT. Solar, not often losing to Ryung, but Ryung was particularly good in late, late game. Now Solar is up against someone who he very much struggles against. So while Solar is a very good Zerg player, he has lost the last seven series Versus Hero. But no one beats Solar eight times in a row, right? Something like that. 
in general, across the entire history of these two, Hero does have a lead. And uh, I think that makes a little more sense. Um, you know, there was also the time which Hero was developing that gateway-based PVZ, and Solar was kind of the punching bag of it. He was the practice punching bag of Hero's gateway blink charge PVZ. A couple of years back, him and Solar were always facing off against each other in the online tournaments, and Hero was just relentless with it. And it just was a, a fact that Solar was one of the more likely to sign up for tournaments. But then that's not really been the go-to anymore in the matchup for a while at this point. Hero will bring it out occasionally, other pros will bring it out occasionally, but kind of moved on from that phase, that fad. And yet Solar still has trouble against maybe the more typical ZVP, you know, blink into a Colossus push maybe, or, you know, triple Oracle into charge storm or charge Archon. All, all those things still something that Solar struggles with. I think they've even played a couple of really late game PVZs and, and Hero still won those. Um, Hero is very tricky in general when it comes to build order variety, which is just something that Zerg players as a whole always had difficulty with. And there's a couple of Zerg players who never seem to be surprised by their opponents. And by a couple, I mean one, Serral. Serral is the only one who never seems to be surprised. So a hero has certainly set an expectation for himself as a more aggressive player, regardless of how he is aggressive. But then even with that, he was able to really flip the script in the Masters Coliseum uh, and in Katowice, where he was playing also very standard and defensive and macro. So Solar, he's got a lot of worry about here. He's surprisingly in the loser's match up against the person who he loses far more against. I think he has a stronger record against Cure. And if he had won against Ryong, then he would have had the momentum as well, which would have been nice. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Solar... If, if things had lined up the way you would expect and Solar beat Ryong, Solar was on a 3-6... He was on an 8-win streak until a few weeks ago against Cure. Like, it would have been the complete opposite situation if Solar was in the winner's match against Cure. Instead, he loses against Ryong, an upset, and now faces a guy who beats him almost uh, all the time. Oh, very sucky situation to be in, honestly. <laughs> Maybe Solar can turn it around. It would be a shock to see, I guess, any of these players, Hero, Solar, or Cure, being knocked out of the round of 16, but one of them has to go. Hero might be the less surprising one, just because his results tend to be very wackadoo. We do have two oracles already on the way, handful of adepts, but playing kind of conservatively with them, one to guard the base and two to guard the third. Hero is a fan of these pylon wall-offs. I guess he either believes that Zerg players no longer want to baneling bust Protoss, and or he believes in his ability to defend against them. That is the weakness. That is why you don't see this pylon wall off from almost any other Protoss. But the upside is very clear. And the upside is that you don't have to build a third 150 mineral structure. <laughs> I tried to say that as concisely, yet least confusingly as possible. But you don't have to build a second gateway. Or, or build your Stargate in the front, or whatever it is. Twilight Council and Forge coming down. Something super aggressive from our boy Hero. Might still grab a third Oracle, but it would have been at that 150, so I don't think he will. And a shield battery, just to be really super safe. Solar certainly could add on a decent amount of lings, although again, we know Solar as more of a macro guy, and that is what he's doing. Lots of drones on the way. Adepts will not take that shade, and that is smart of them, but they are now obviously out on the map. Combined with the Oracle, they're pretty safe, actually. One Adept did go down. Womp womp. Still a total of three, plus he's adding on stalkers because the intention is to go into blink. Couple extra gateways, and he's trying to wall off that third base as well. Solar with a basic droning going on. Roach Warren is coming down alongside an evolution chamber. Not something that Hero, I think, has actually seen. No, he is not. The Oracle is taking... Again, a more defensive approach here. Now finally combining together and might go hunting into that main. Or the third. 
It's actually the third that's going to be under fire. No Spore Crawler, and the Queens were slightly out of position as they were spreading creep. A very, very, very quick reaction from Solar, and Spores are available elsewhere. Maybe one drone will go down there. Nope, you're not going to go for it. And actually, behind this, far more important, no Robo, no fourth Nexus, at least yet anyway. Tons of gateways. He actually might be going into his gateway base. Oh, well, never mind. Two extra gas will come down. Still, that is a decent amount of gateways. He could start to apply some pressure, but no Robo. There's a War Prism, but you can still get on the map a little bit when your Oracles are also helping to cover you. Because the primary problem are Lings getting us around. Otherwise, you can blink away from the Roaches that are being produced. Something that, again, Hero, it doesn't actually know. He never got to stick out on the Roach Warren, but I think he did. Research complete. He did see a late weekly jiggly on the evolution chamber, so he knows that wasn't a like fast plus one melee. I'm pretty sure. It's actually really hard to tell if you can scout a wiggly jiggly with the vision. Usually other things like light up or something. <laughs> so I don't know. Actually not sure about that one. But anyway. I think he's gonna expect it. He's gonna expect roaches. He's going to charge. He's going to two two with the uh, sorry, two one with double forge. And so it is very gateway based, but with six gases, I mean, either he's going to add on a ton of stalkers, or we will actually be adding on maybe some Colossus or Storm. Fourth Nexus now on the way, as expected. I didn't think Hero was going to all in or anything like this, but... Something on the map, and that is something. Stalkers just clearing up creep tumors, missing one active one. That's a bummer. Ling run by, not going to find too much success. That's microable, that's microable, that's microable. There we go. And it is Temple Archives coming down first, then the Robo Hive is already on the way for Solar. But uh, as someone who was actually around to cast quite a few of their mass gateway versus whatever Solar could muster up to defend games, Solar actually had a lot of trouble deciding exactly what did work against this style of play because there are so many ways to really utilize it. I mean, sometimes it was a three base all in, sometimes it was a really, really fast, expansive type of Protoss style, like faster expansions in the Zerg. Sometimes it turned out to be only a, um, like Stalker Colossus push pre-Hive, and that would screw him up. Like, he had a lot of trouble finding the, the thing that worked best against Hero all the time, because it really wasn't one thing, I suppose. But people have gotten better against it, so there is that. And Lurkers can certainly help to cement the defenses of the hatcheries. There's a certain amount of Lurkers that you can get to that will never be overwhelmed by a stalker count. I'm gonna say like eight Lurkers. That's when the Immortals start to come in. That's when Storm starts to help as well, weaken this to the Lurkers so the Immortals can come in. That's when multi-pronged attacks really start to help out. Well, Solar might be very comfortable on four bases, getting his upgrades, getting his max out position. That's totally A-OK. -okay. A fifth base might actually start to open up some weaknesses in his base defenses. Very on point for the upgrades as well for Hero as he moves on to three, two, more gateways because he's still very gateway based. All eight gas is taken as he also probably looks towards even a f Well, he might wait till he's maxed out for a fifth. This isn't like the fastest style of... Uh, expanding that we've seen from him. We've seen him in this matchup even go like five gas, five nexus. And it's very clear what Solar's plan is. Those oracles just scouted the number of lurkers as well. I've certainly finished, although Hero has yet to actually scout that. It's pretty much a certainty. Unless the Zerg player is already in trouble, you know, they're almost always getting lurkers with a hive. And so, they're getting the lurker upgrades. Range coming out first, then the speed burrow. Solar actually moving aggressively on the map. This is going to be Hero's time to shine with that multitasking. So he's got Storms and Immortals guarding against the lurkers, which if he, if he catches them on the front, doesn't let them get into a choke. He can actually really buy a lot of time while his stalkers and zealots do the damage over here. That was the intent. Solar, quick to defend, sees the opportunity that uh, presented itself to the Protoss. Reacts quickly enough to save the hatchery. Still has the lurkers sharking around for the correct positioning. Because if he can get these into a choke and get his army on the front lines as well, that would be beautiful. Right now, only lurkers is a little dangerous, but there are 13 of them, so we're going to need certainly a multi-prong uh, surround, basically. And that is kind of what we're happening. 
we're seeing before is those storms, there's so freaking many of them, but the lings just force all the storms to be put on that left side. It looks like the rest of the army, however, coming in from the third base, coming in from two different directions from behind. We'll go ahead and clear up all those lurkers. A huge investment from the Zerg player, who again wasn't on a lot of bases. Fifth base now up and running, but no drones on it yet. Not a humongous bank for them to work with, and apparently a larva problem? Nine larva not being used, despite having a bank as the Protoss army comes marching on over. Yes, all of the High Templars were forced to merge into Archons, but those Archons are still helpful. Three Immortals still as well. Fourth Immortal gets caught. Archons once again form these Lings, trying their best to make a bit of a comeback happen. But Solar is still in some trouble as the Stalkers were taking down more drones. No time to build Lurkers. Hydra's looking kind of vulnerable to this army as it gets closer and closer to pinning them down against their own walls, against their own bases. Hero does not have a War Prism, so just maybe Solar can hold on defensively, but it doesn't seem to be the case. The upgrades also really coming into effect right there. 3-2 versus only two attack on the Hydras and Roaches and Queens as they were spilling forth from all the production lines was less than ideal. Hero is reinforcing from across town. That is the only reason, I think, that he doesn't just win right here, right now. It's because he didn't have a War Prism, because those links flanking forced so many of his High Templars to turn into Archons, because certainly Archons are good, but you want to have a balance of them. You want some Archons, you want some t Storms, that's the ideal. Those are the two reasons Solar holds on, but Solar is still in a very worrisome state. He does finally use up his bank. Maybe he was intentionally holding on to it because he knew he wanted to make Lurkers. So that's fair enough, but he was also under an extreme amount of pressure. So I had to deal with that first. Now able to use the bank to build 10, 13 Lurkers actually in total. With both upgrades now, I believe speed might have been missing from this engagement. Not that he would have been able to really use it. No intention of Hero to go into Stargates. That would slow the game down, and while he probably still would win with, like, a carrier transition, I don't think he really would slow the game down that much. She at least got a Mothership, which is kind of a cute addition. You can use it to also recall back to the Nexus, back to the Mothership, whatever, whatever. And we see that Cloak being a problem. Sporecrawl having to move Overseer. Actually still slow, is slow to respond. And the Zealots coming forth now to chop down that hatchery, which Solar needs at this point. 69 drones, I guess, is not as strong as it once was. But, you know, the point is he'd want that hatchery plus a couple more drones, wouldn't he? The Zealots will give their lives for that, but a kill on the hatchery, a kill on some drones, and a big distraction means that Hero will just overwhelm the Zerg player. And Solar's luck against Hero does not seem to be turning. In the bottom left, we have Hero, now up one. And let's up right, we do have Solar. I really cannot emphasize enough how important it was that Ryung took down Solar in their preliminary match. That has completely changed the course of the group. Well, we see both players opening up normally. I do want to highlight that with some facts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Solar had won the previous 22 series versus Ryung until the best of three today. And almost all of them were without dropping a map. 20 of them were him not even dropping a map versus Ryung. He was so insanely favored. The last time he lost versus Ryung was back in 2017. He was so insanely favored versus Ryung. Then he would have won that, and then Kira had a really good chance to win versus Hero, which is what he did. And then Solar had a winning record versus Cure as well. Solar should have had the perfect trajectory to go to the round of eight. And because he gets upset by Ryung, he then is forced to face the guy he basically wanted to avoid. There's one person that he would have not have felt confident against, and that would have been Hero. Absolutely insane. Ryung really dicking over Solar here. <laughs> and if Solar loses this map and then Ryung loses versus Hero, which I do expect to happen, but Ryung keeps surprising me, I feel like Solar needs to like smack him over the head. 
you know, they're both brethren in their losses, so they can they can smack each other. But like Solar really needs to just punch the guy in the face. Like he screwed him up totally and completely. <laughs> Ugh. Great news for Hero. As uh yeah, he was gonna struggle versus Cure. It wasn't impossible for him to beat Cure at all, but he was gonna struggle versus him. And then he was uh he was favored actually versus either Ryung or Solar, I guess. So like Hero had I suppose um, more avenues of getting outs. Maybe not in first, but in second at the very least. But yeah. But, uh, but yeah. <laughs> very unfortunate. The question is, are we in the good timeline? Exactly. Is that a time traveler coming back to change the course of things in a good direction? Or... Solar still has a chance to win this series and then win the decider, get the revenge versus Ryung, which I think if he were to face him again, 100% he wins. But defeating Hero has remained to, to be a problem considering how last game looked, which was Hero in total absolute control. I guess there wasn't a lot that happened, but when something happened, it happened pretty quickly in Hero's strength, in Hero's control, and in Hero's favor. Now we have a different opener here from Hero. It's going to be a Void Ray first, so that's going to throw a ton of questions into Solar's mind. Because this is obviously going to clear out any amount of uh, scouting. So this could be... I mean, a Void Ray first is a little funny, just because it is a little more expensive than a Phoenix, for instance, but it's also more useful than a Phoenix. But this could be a Twilight Council right after the Void Ray. It actually is an Oracle, which... Maybe Solar saw? Hold on. Actually, Solar did see the Oracle, so he knows that it's not an immediate Twilight Council follow-up, but... Regardless, you, you don't know what is going to be coming out from here from now on. Zero chance of getting that scouting unless Solar wanted to invest into Overlord Speed, which would still have to be, you know, to get 100 gas, then he'd have to research it. And then that'd be far too late to scout whatever he needs to scout. So it's just a little more concerning. And, and the thing is, Hero doesn't have to do anything with this. Hero could literally do a totally normal macro build, go into Blink and a Forge and a Robo and whatever, and just laugh as Solar's like, oh my god, 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 what is he doing, what is he doing, what is he doing? Hero is going into Resident Enclave's build, so there is something sneaky and aggressive on the way. But will Solar be prepared for it? He's getting Lings, he's getting a Baneling Nest, and those two things can defeat Adepts. But it's a little more complicated than that. Adepts are not a one-and-done type of unit. They don't just run headfirst into an army and it's a, a numbers check. Do you have enough? Do you not have enough? Solar's actually going for a lot, though. He's added a couple of more drones, but now he's adding on nothing but lings. So he's going to bailing bust hero. If the adepts get surrounded and get bopped by banelings, fan freaking tastic. Solar putting everything on the line for his last map in the GSL round of 16 would be fantastic. If he misses the surrounds, he could be in a lot of trouble. Because yes, if they don't get a surround, then at least the Lings individually get surrounds on the Adepts, so there is that, but you really want to just get rid of these things as soon as possible. And things have already gone very screwy as it turns into a base trade. Adepts do initiate their attack at the same time Solar was planning to attack into Hero's natural. Sentry tries to be built, but of course is popped by the Banelings. And now it is just a, manner, a matter of who takes the least amount of damage. The Adepts already killed 11 drones and decided to be recalled back home. And that is where the Banelings mostly spend themselves, by the way. So no more one-shot or two-shot kills, I guess, on the probes. More probes could still fall, however, as there are a decent number of Lings spilling forth into the main base and now into the third base as well. 18 probes have gone down. However, Hero still has a lead in the worker count. Don't forget that. Shield Badger will be the target of Solar's follow-up Ling aggression, which means some of these probes will in fact live. The Adept held strong. The Oracle's held out with a Pulsar Beam. The Adept still alive, actually, following the rest of the Lings and stopping them from finding that extra damage that they really needed to do, actually. Even though Solar has now finally gotten back into the lead when it comes to the drones, we have some other problems. Obviously, three base to three base, not great for a Zerg player. They want to be up one base. Then we have only Lings versus kind of a, again, a problematic adept hit squad potential. They can spread, they can shade, they can get into corners. They are complicated to deal with, and Lings, if they don't get this around, just so much worse against them. 
Then you have the fact that we already have some upgrades on the way for Hero. Plus one's almost done. Blink is now on the way. And Hero just seems to have a better chance at following up such a base trade than Solar does. I mean, that's not always the case. You know, Zerg's ability to choose between droning and, and making army can oftentimes give them a better chance. But without that fourth base and with the threat of the Adepts being so strong, Solar can't just willy-nilly build drones. He had to build Lings. He has to deal with them as effectively as possible, which is already not as effectively as possible. Six of them, five of them escaping and focus firing down even more drones is something that uh, Solar was unable to do with his own lings. Nice focus fire on that remaining Baneling too. And the Adepts apparently aren't going to stop. I mean, I think they will after this one. These should be the last Adepts. And then Hero also mined out the minerals to take his fourth base in a very safe location as Solar is nowhere close to doing that. And Solar still not on his own fourth base is now falling behind on the town hall counts, which is not good at all. And his hero might even be preparing his final killing blow here as he is... Well, he's actually going double forge again and four nexus, obviously. So as I say, like he's preparing his killing blow as dramatically as possible. It's more like he's just continuing on with his build, to be fair. But continuing on with his build will probably kill the Zerg player. <laughs> so it's still kind of delivering, preparing his killing blow delivery. And the Adepts actually played the their parts very conservatively. These last six Adepts had to stay at home. No Spore Crawler means the Oracle gets a couple of freebies. Hero is now ahead by nine workers as his fourth Nexus is already 80% done. Solar's hatchery about 70, but it's four base of four. Not great for the Zerg. At the very least, Solar would want to be on a hive. You know, he could be playing this like he did play last game, which was a uh, very defensive, high-technology type of play into Lurkers. Didn't work, but it was something. Now he's not even on high-technology, not on high-economy. So what does he have? Slightly bigger army supply, but we know what that means in this matchup. A 23 army supply lead is not enough, even as the Queens get pulled here for what looks to be an all-in. But an all-in that is far ahead of a plus-one melee finishing. Would have been a little awkward on that timing, and now it's just a... Uh, not going to turn into an all-in. I, I say all-in, but I guess the queens really weren't that far from their own creep spread. Maybe they were just trying to intercept the Void Ray. Regardless. <laughs> Solar can't do anything, right? He tries to all-in. He goes up against a brick wall of Stalkers and Void Rays and whatnot. He builds army to defend an attack that is not very committed by Hero. It means he's not building drones. He's not building additional hatcheries. So he's uh, he can't win. Uh, Stalker Micro's a little off. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Whoopsie poopsie. I think he was microing his Void Ray, which died. But the War Prism is still intact. Now able to avoid the Crows of Biles. After warping in the Stalkers, which are kind of losing the battle, I mean, to an extent. They're still trading out effectively enough, but it's okay. War Prism will go to go and uh, harass while the Stalkers run back to the safety of a shield battery as well as, well as more reinforcements. Fifth base at the gold now on the way as Solar is stuck on four bases. I think he has mined out. Oh, he broke the rocks. Okay, so he could take his gold. But he does not have the attention to do so right now. Has plenty of minerals. Maybe not as many larvae as he would like. And now dealing with the harassment of the War Prism and the still growing number of stalkers on the front line. Scoozy. And now the creep spread is going to be depleted too, which is going to further open up opportunities for Hero to go for multi-pronged aggression. He can go to the middle now that the creep spread isn't there. The right side now that the creep spread is limited. There we go. And the left side will always be a target of that warp prism. Hero adding on a dark shrine to further harass and annoy. Not going to the Templar archives like it did last game, which really didn't show off its storm so much. Archons are useful, but not, not storm. Stasis Trap catches some of those Ravagers. Immortal is left out in the open, but at least does its duty as far as tanking some of those Banelings before it dies. And this is Solar's best possible chance. The Stalker number is not particularly high, but with good upgrades and a Shield Body Overcharge, the Banelings crash in, take down a majority of those Stalkers. Now this is happening because Hero put a lot of his reinforcements into the Zealot Runbys, which are currently decimating the economy of Solar, turning Solar's attack into a true all-in that is dangerously close to working. Hero, not respecting the amount of army on the field enough, might have wanted to return home, stayed 
at home. They would have saved that Immortal and had a better choke to work with, but now he's down to using DTs to save the day. But guess what? It works. It absolutely works. There's no Overseer. Solar doesn't even have the cash with an Overseer. And Solar, unfortunately, will be going down in this game. And this GSL group, 0 2 0 2. GG. Very unfortunate, tough day for Solar, man. Things could have gone so differently. So, so differently. A hero will keep the Protoss hope alive. Well, for this group. You guys already had two Protoss make it through in another group. But he'll keep his Protoss hopes alive, and he will face Ryung in the Decider match. For our Decider match, we have Oceanborn for game number one. In the top left, he is Ryung. And on the bottom right, we have Hero. Hero going for a very early probe, by the way. I'm going to follow that one. He does do this a lot, though, versus Terran, just to get harassment. He likes to be very annoying. But anyway, we are witnessing the decider match. Whoever wins this moves on to the round of eight. Whoever loses is out of the GSL. The expectation is 100% in my opinion that Ryung is the one to lose. Hero is currently on a five series win streak against him. Although to be fair, at least one of those was a very close best of five. The second one was a close best of three. And uh, really they've, they've been kind of back and forth even after Ryung has returned from military. Where Ryung's return from military was a lot less impressive than Hero's. There was a time where Hero was actually like on a 10 win streak against him, but that was back in 17, 18, before his military. So yeah, uh, post military for these two has been combative, but certainly Hero sided, and certainly most recently. And in general, I think that's hero style of play, like I'd said in a, a previous series, but if you missed it, hero style of play, I don't think really lets Ryung's best TVP show. And that is hero being aggressive in the early and mid game a lot of the time. I think Ryung is very good with his decision making and control of his army when it comes to the mid kind of late game, just before late game, I guess, where he maxes out on just as many Marauders as he can possibly get and then gets really six rounds. That was a very popular way of winning this matchup for most Terrans for a while, I guess. But I think for him, it was the best moment of his career, TVP-wise, when was that was the, the common meta. And even when it wasn't, there is was, uh, less just like spam marauders, right? I think he still uh, did it and he was still pretty good with it. But... Um, he needs to get there. He needs to get there first, and I think that's the difficult part against Hero, who is more likely to go for not just like a four-gate blink, I suppose, but also to go for a proxy gateway, proxy stargate. He even sometimes throws out a real, like, uh, a void ray cheese again, I guess, once in a blue moon. Or a Colossus timing, maybe. Uh, charge storm. Phoenix charge. Although it really seems to have fallen off from every single Protoss. I can't remember the last time I saw Phoenix charge. Most Protosses nowadays, as Hero Miss rallies his gas probes, are, if they do go Phoenix, are going Phoenix Colossus. It seems like Ryung's plan versus Hero is very similar to his plan versus Solar, which is get to the greediest possible opening versus your opponent, and then hope that that's enough to win the game. Because this is the greediest you can be versus a Protoss. That is 3cc no factory, right into a second barracks. I, 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 I guess you could also add on engineering bays right now, and that would be the greediest thing, but that seems so insane to me <laughs> in this matchup. It was already pretty insane in TBZ, but completely insane in this matchup. Because if you were being four-gated, which is a popular build post Twilight Council for Hero, then you would already be very scared of a four gate with a three CC. But if you went three CC double engineering bay, I think you just literally couldn't hold. Pretty sure. Three CC into three racks might be a little bit different. There's a power spike for the four gate player, but then it does go into the hands of the bio player, actually. The barracks start to kick in production wise and give you just enough units to really work with. We typically think of a four gate defense as really tank dependence initially. But if you can get enough bio, then it works.
And it is a four gate, by the way. Hero gonna try and apply some serious pressure to his opponents. He does not know what his opponent's build is. His probe scouted the one gas, but that's not a scout, just knows the one to expand. And his adept is seeing no factory right behind the barracks, but it could just be a little farther back. And the adept actually failed in its shade completion, by the way. It completed its shade here as opposed to actually on the like highest point of the ramp. Hero is going to sacrifice a second adept? Okay, no he's not, but I... I, I could actually kind of see his logic if he did. Just in case that one adept didn't barely miss whatever was up there. Unfortunately, he's just still not getting any scouting. There could be 20 marines held up in the main base for all he knows. There could be two tanks hiding, I guess. It's, it'd be very unlikely, but I, you know, it's, it could happen. And now he just needs to get his army into the main. Which is exactly what he's doing. Forgate is fully underway. Now, Ryung had no idea he was being Forgate. He knew about the Twilight Council, and so he knew that this could be a possibility. But there are no bunkers in the main base. Which, if he had a bunker, I'd actually really believe in his chances. The Zealot's coming in to help out versus the SCV pool. And now the Stalker is using their range to take down those Marauders. And obviously, Micro away from the Marines. Blinking down as they get injured as well. Very nice blink control there from the Protoss. As Ryung does take nine SEVs worth of damage, do remember three CC will make up for that very, very quickly. Most importantly, he has to retain his army units. That's really the, the gist of things here. Stim is done as long, alongside combat shields, actually, so this is a heftier Terran force. Hero has to respect that Stim. Once it wears off, however, these units are just weaker, aren't they? Yeah, one soccer loss and a little overzealousness right there. At this point, Hero has clearly uh, decided that the four gate all in is not going to work. He's not going to dedicate all of his resources into soccers. He got a Nexus, he got a Forge, he got Charge, he got a Robotics Bay, I believe, in that order. And so he, now he's trying to find as much damage as possible with the harassing forces, which if he finds SCVs, great. If he finds Marauders, also pretty great. Finds one, but does trade out a Stalker for it. And this last Stalker had some, some dreams there. Good control away from the Zealots, but these army units of Ryong are still very, very injured. And honestly, Stalkers are really good in these types of situations. They are, their micro potential is so good. The Terran is really on a, on a one-trick pony. You know, do I surprise you by popping Stim? But the Stalkers can actually micro so well against this. Continue focus firing the injured Marauders. Continue forcing Stims, running away and coming back. Because even if the Medivacs pop out, and heal them up, you're still, you know, kind of wasting the medevac energy if your shields are the only damage you ever take. But I'd say at this point, most importantly, you are just keeping tabs on the Terran, making sure that they don't just run across the map and kill you, because you are not quite ready to defend. I gotta actually shout out some of the micro here from Ryong. He saved a Marauder in a bunker, and he just saved a Marauder in the medevac. That was really cool pickup, micro. Now, it actually <laughs> is quite the bold decision from Hero, but that's what he does, isn't it? He's going to go for Zealots on the offensive. I guess, okay, so he's trying to two-prong. I, I still think it's very bold, actually. I would say a lot of other Protosses, certainly my instinct would be to just be spamming army at home, making sure I could survive their inevitable counterattack. And, and Hero's like, nah, Zealots are still great at banking. Oh my god. Um, I said banking. Zealots are great at... Tanking. There you go. Tanking Marauder shots. And then he also rallied his Colossus forward. Now, the Colossus can be a bully, so that's kind of fair, but... It's, I would say, very unlikely that you get to control the Terran like this. But Hero really doing an excellent job of it, so that Ryung never felt comfortable being outside of his own choke. Constantly having to worry about the Zealot bombs in the main base. And that's partially because the Observer is getting free vision, by the way. And now Hero is just being a big old bully on the front lines. The Colossus does not have range, so it needs to be a little careful against the Marauders. And the Bunker will actually stand uh, quite strong here, but... Uh, Hero might be pulling the trigger. It's such a dangerous maneuver, though. And this, I would say there's actually not a, a strong reason to do it. I feel like Hero has certainly made up for what a 4-gate takes away from you. The economy, the upgrades, the technology. I feel like Hero has made up for that. Fourth base almost done. Two upgrades finally on the way as he holds strong on his upgrades versus his opponent. Even a cannon comes down to help against Wittemine drop offense. Uh, yeah, I feel like Hero doesn't have to move in here. 
And I guess he isn't. Uh, he uh, looks like he tried for a hot second, force field on the bunker. Sounds like that's injured, I guess. Lots of spotting pylons put down as Hero has had to control over the map. Ryong is at nine and a half minutes, finally getting his third CC down. Really, his three CC build did not work. This was not the ideal situation. He would have wanted to have really completely pushed the four gate away with his Terran forces and then taken some form of map control. But he has never gotten to do that, including, but not limited to, you know, his third CC having to be late as well. A couple of Wooden Mines pop off and help clear out the Zealot numbers. And without the Zealots, this is a very vulnerable Protoss army, particularly against the Marauder Count that Ryung is so insistent on building. But the third CC, it's knocked down. That's an all-in now from Ryung. He may as well pull the boys. Oh, no. I actually had a strong belief in Ryung's comeback potential with the third CC. Although his, his lack of medevac energy is such a bummer. He built Vikings to respond to the Colossus, knowing that he's choked into his own natural. But now he's he's got, you know, he's got a problem. He's got no medevac energy. EMPs are coming out, and Hero has to respect that, making a vulnerable army even more vulnerable. More Warpings coming in. Third Colossus coming in, hot off the press. Still no extended thermal lance, but I don't know if the Marauders are ever getting on top of these things. The Vikings do clear out one Colossus, working on the second. The Bio trying to micro away from the beams as long as possible, but there is just no healing here. The Medivacs were out of juice from the beginning of that engagement. And that is that. GG Hero. A masterful control post Fourgate, I would say. The Fourgate was very good, actually. Uh, for what it could do versus Ryung's amount of bio, but then I would say kind of the post Foragate is where I was really impressed with Hero. Because it would not have surprised me for a lot of other Protoss players to misjudge certain moments once the Terran does have bio, stim, combat shields, and medivacs. But Hero controlled that super, super well. So he takes game number one. In the top left, it is Hero, now up one. In the bottom right, we have Ryung. So far, every series today has been a 2-0. Will that continue? I kind of feel like Hero would 2-0 Ryung. Ryung has surprised me. Once again, fast harassing probe on the on the way out. It also does fast scouting, to be fair, but with Hero being such an offensive player, I just always imagine it's more about the being a dickhead than <laughs> it is about scouting. If Ryung wanted to try and throw a wrench into things, he could try. I mean, you know, it's funny. I talk about this, and yet I didn't talk at all about it in his Cure series. Because Hero does so often go for an aggressive probe. And yet, that's exactly what he didn't do versus Cure, funnily enough. So, that that probably just plays 100% into the expectations. And that uh, he, Hero would not be bothered by the probe harassment, first of all. But then also, uh, you know, might not be a cheeser. He certainly was today, <laughs> but maybe not. And then Ryung might actually be bothered by the probe micro and also might uh, cheese him. But yeah, it's uh, funny seeing him be so insistent, insist uh, insistent on this. And then in the series where it would have mattered scouting wise, he didn't do it at all. Lots of SUVs injured. Little pulls here and there, but nothing serious going down. One racks expand as well again for Ryung. Question is, will he go 3cc? At the end of the day, the 3cc did deter Ryung from having a um, strongest possible anti four gate defense, I suppose. Especially because he was so greedy, he didn't do an SUV scout, he didn't get a Reaper. So he goes for a high ground CC, first of all, this time around, because he has no idea what his opponent's doing. But he's also going for a Reaper. Very cheeky gas steal here from Hero. Now, it could be another 3cc build, to be fair. And then the second gas would not be taken very quickly, much at all, but it is unlikely. So the thing that Ryung could still do, though, is that he still could go into Hellions off of one gas for an extended period of time while still affording the starport. But it, it, does, it, it is annoying. <laughs> it's also getting some scouting, I guess. Stargates is the option here for Hero, who might be thinking that Ryung will be tempted to go into a type of Hellion opener and into a drop. In which case, that would be awesome. I'm not sure he's confident that is the exact order that things would go down. 
especially because you don't need a tech lab for a cyclone. Uh, so you need so a little less gas you would need to go into it. Oh, and a, and a wind of mine, obviously. <laughs> Duh, the wind of mines will toss much gas either, of course. So you can still go into one wind of mine, into a one 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 widow mine drop. But the follow-ups is gonna hurt, and I think that might be more so be what we got heroes thinking. Seeing as it is two marines killing his assimilator, that alone tells him, I think. I mean, the timing of it's awfully suspicious. That looks like a reactor barracks, doesn't it? When two marines pop out like that, tells him it's reactor marines, not reactor factory. We have a phoenix as the opener, and now the question is, does Hero do what has not been done, and it feels like months? Does he go for the phoenix zealot? Or does he go phoenix colossus? It's fucking phoenix colossus. I swear, no one does phoenix charge anymore. What happened to it? What did you do to my boy? Defensively placed widow mines as that reaper dig across the map, and, well, I actually don't see the star date. Just died. How- wait, how did that die? Did he just... I guess just out of the adept. I mean, simple as that. <laughs> Alright then. Maybe it's all that it was a two adept opener, or even a three adept opener, and he just guessed that it was Phoenix, or... He knew that he had no idea what it was and placed his widow mine defensively, in which case that makes total sense. And now his medevac looks a little useless, honestly. You could always try. But Hero has both Zelnagas and the middle of the map with his adept scouting. No other use for them. Because any forward scouting into Ryung's natural, into Ryung's main base can be done with a phoenix. And yeah, we're gonna get that robotics bay thrown down as well. Oh, what a surprise. The good news is for Ryung, if, uh... I'm bored by it, then he's probably expecting it. <laughs> Phoenix Colossus, not Phoenix Charge. You still want to confirm, just because the pace that it sets is so extremely different. If it's Phoenix Charge, you got to be very careful about when you move out for the Terran's perspective. You don't want to be overwhelmed. He's actually going to move out here. He's building reactor Cyclones. Hoping to kill a kind of greedier Phoenix player. I mean, this is pretty typical for a Phoenix player. I don't call it greedy. You know, shield battery immortal, I think, all before the Nexus here. Even another shield battery that's kind of protecting it as well. Phoenix are injured from a Widow Mine hit. And this is always tricky for the Protoss to defend against. Sentry goes down immediately. That's a bummer. That Guardian Shield has been so effective with all the Marines that are helping out right now. Immortal also only getting one shot there to support after taking its shield and so much damage. Shield battery, he's gonna yeah, actually use his Phoenix to save it temporarily. And now Hero is gonna get into position to save the rest of, uh, I mean, I guess everything, right? What mines do pop off once more, however, clear out the front line guards of the Immortals, but that is just too many Protoss units. Phoenix uh, are dead. That is the most bummerous thing about this. And at least the Viking died, the four Cyclones died. And all the Marines, too. But yeah, the loss of the Phoenix is always such a bummer, because you don't have anything else that actually does anti-air. It's something that Ryung is very aware of and is absolutely going to try and take advantage of. So he's got Cyclones and a Medivac going for the offensive. Liberator trying to go for some harassment. There are Stalkers that can shoot up, clearly, but they aren't as dependable. One Phoenix was created, is going to help in the main base, actually. Oh, two Phoenix just popped out. My bad. And so that drop didn't really work as you would want. Hero currently at a deficit of workers. Isn't in the best possible position, but with a Colossus base type of style, I don't think the evenness of the workers is as disappointing as if it was, you know, gateways. We're only getting his third CC down now. He did build a lot of Cyclones, which means that his barracks production must have been delayed in some way, even if it was, you know, just the reactor not being used. But, uh,. All things considered, it's a pretty normal game, yeah? Hero's defense of that attack could have been smoother. I'm not exactly sure how, but it maybe it could have. It's always very difficult, especially on the map that has such a far away positioning of your third nexus. But I guess it could have. Basically, if he can get his phoenix out alive there, alongside his immortals, that'd be great, but he didn't. 3cc up and out for Ryong, 1-1 on the way for him as Hero's gonna be 
on one forge for a little while. But now he has five barracks, three marauders being pumped out at a time. And Ryong will get to play his game a little more this time around. Last game, as I was trying to say in the beginning, that 3cc did ultimately hurt his chances to get into a more uh, normal TVP pacing, where the Protoss player does a little harassment, and then the Terran player gets stim, and then the Terran player takes the map control and threatens some drops, threatens some multi pronged attacks, threatens some dives on your army. And then, depending on what the Protoss is doing, maybe they actually get comfortable again and they start to take a little map control like they do a Colossus push. Then the Terran has to retreat, but they retreat back to a better concave because they're out of their own natural at that point. You know, that, that's more normal. The fact that Ryung was almost entirely stuck in his own natural and his own choke for that entire game was the unnatural part of that. Uh, so yeah, this looks like more normal TVP. And in that case, Ryung's hefty Marauder count with lots of medevac energy can actually do kind of well against this. Two Colossus aren't going to burn down as much army as you might think. Not a whole lot of Stalkers, but there are a decent number of Phoenix, so the Vikings got to be worried about that. Liberator will help out. What Mines are placed. Zealots trying to micro correctly against this. EMP is popping out perhaps in the nick of time, helping a lot versus the Zealots as the Wood Mine also pops off. And we just simply have Hero not really engaging. There's so much tip-tapping and microing away from the Terran player that the range is ultimately winning here and all Terran units are ranged. The Zealots were so busy trying to avoid being widow mined or being dragged away from the Colossus and the Immortals that they didn't actually get their shots, they didn't actually get their swipes. Ditto on the Phoenix, really, who would have loved to have chased down the Vikings, but the Vikings utilized their micro and their range really well to focus fire at the Colossus. And that is Ryung showing off the control of this more mid-game army that I, I was trying to give him credit for. So I'm glad to see that. Really nice control there. If you had simply just accepted an engagement and went, sure, maybe I have enough, let's clash. And all of those zealots get on top of the bio, get their swipes in, get some friendly fire from the Widow Mines, and it's much, much worse. Not only that, I guess, but also 1-1. One, one impacted the battle, which is very nice. No armor on those Zealots, which Hero's army relied so much on. Still no armor, as he's only on a single forge. There we go, finally activating the second one. Fourth Nexus was built behind that push, so it's not like Hero's in an absolutely terrible position, but he does need to add on some Chonk and some ability to kill Chonk. And by that, I mean Disruptors. So, he wants Disruptors to actually kill Ryung's Marauders, where the Colossus fell short. The charge lots fall short, and the Immortals sometimes never get close enough. The disruptors are kind of the hope there. And then my uh, chonkiness of the army, I guess, also just <laughs> armor upgrades would be helpful. But yeah, four bases, discovered by Ryung, of course, who now sends his army that direction. Hero no longer with all the map control on all the map vision in the world. Does not have the Zelenaga to see that. He's lost track of the army to a tiny degree, but Ryung does choose to go defend at home. Sense Tower clearly seeing all this movement, knows exactly what's going down. Cyclones, I think we're f seen. Yeah, the probe at the Zelnaga, so. Yeah, the Phoenix should tackle that, no problem. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here with a good read on that. And his transition over into more disruptors, more upgrades, is exactly what he should be doing is expanding to the fifth base, so. Really no qualms there as Ryung takes a fourth base and waits till he's in a more maxed out, perfect army position. Getting two, no, one additional starport, and just, well, upgrades, actually. He's almost maxed out. He really has quite a good army. He's got two, two upgrades versus just the plus two. Dodge the disruptor shot. Vikings getting three shots on the Colossus as the Phoenix were simply late to the battle. Running over the bio when things were already far too late, and Hero moves out onto the map into a slaughter. Now purely dependent on the disruptors that I believe no longer have any more shots. They might have one or two left in just a second here. There's one actually. Dodge away is decent enough. Ryung has such a better army supply that avoiding any terrible disruptor hits, Ryung should be able to overwhelm. Took his opportunity when he was given it and now has killed Hero's fifth base. If you're a little shy about continuing to move forward, but I think he could. His upgrades are still amazing, even though Hero's plus one armor finish kind of post battle. His upgrade's still superior, his army count's superior, his medevac's still with energy, his vikings could also land or whatever they need to do to help out, and Ryung 
actually gets to show off his good mid-game TVP. EMP on the Zealots just makes them so obsolete, and the Disruptors can't catch up to the army, which is also now being reinforced as Ryung sees the opportunity. Good Disruptor focus fire, good Disruptor dodge, and now just the last two Disruptor shots gonna capture just a handful of you. I think there was like three. And again, the Disruptors are really the only thing that Hero has left. He's got four of them in his pocket as he goes to the more dependable Colossus edition, and I do like going back into Colossus. I think that is actually very good, but it might not be enough. 30 armor supply difference, just about. Double fusion core as Rung actually got a little uh, caught up in the moment. He could be building lib range right now. But even without lib range, he can still be rallying his lib raiders into the front lines. Something that Hero really can't deal with. Hero needs that map control, needs a stronger stalker count as well to tackle a transitioning Terran. And he also would have loved the fifth base as <laughs> he's trying to get back up and running. He took such a bad engagement that now it is up to Ryung to lose this game. Ryung has to make the mistake. Two fusion cores make all the units attack twice as fast. Absolutely. 100% that's how that works. Imagine if that were true. The Libras would be insane. A big old concave coming in from Ryung as he sees the opportunity to get a partial surround on his Pronos opponent. Disruptor is already shooting their shots and not finding any success. And there is the end of this game. Ryung shows off his prowess in the mid game. Hero did not play a style altering opening. Ryung got to 3cc. He's got to his Marauders. He got some pressure with the Cyclones, whether it was the deciding factor in this game, I guess you could argue, but I would certainly say that it wasn't. I'd say it was kind of a, a wash. It was absolutely Hero's move out around here, wasn't it? That Ryung was able to determine, hey, you know what? I can actually take this fight. And Hero was ill-prepared. Now done 80 supply. We are absolutely finally getting a game number three. The decider match. We'll get to the decider game. The last possible map of the GSL, Group D. In the bottom left, he is Hero. And in the top right, it is Ryung. Hero played the first game, as I said, would make Ryung uncomfortable. Did he do it because he thought it would make Ryung uncomfortable? Maybe. Did he do it because he knows that he's probably the second best four-gate player in the world? Maybe. Did he do it because he's just wacky and he does whatever he wants? Maybe. But it worked. Then the second game was a little more normal. His opener didn't really allow for a lot of wrenches thrown into Ryung, Ryung's build. I mean, Ryung, if anything, kind of threw a wrench into his own build, I guess, by going for the Cyclones. He could have just said, okay, two Cyclones to defend. Let me just go into a macro game. But he went for the Cyclones squad. What, four or six? Yeah, either one. And then the attack, like I said, maybe a wash. Hero did lose his Phoenix, which really is quite disappointing. But then Medivac follow-up didn't do anything. Liberator follow-up was mediocre. So... I feel like he kind of did okay making up for the Phoenix loss. It was that it became such a normal TVP. It became a game in which Ryung could get Marauders, could get Medivacs with energy, could get a Concave, and really show off how he takes engagements. And nothing showed it off better, I think, than the defense around his third. As I said, at that point, I really want to reiterate it, you try and do that exact same engagement when you're a lazier Terran. And let's be real, most of us are really lazy. At the end of the day, we just look at the Protoss army and go, I hope I win. <laughs> and we just butt heads. Ryung maybe doesn't lose, but he definitely doesn't take as good of an engagement. Like, Hero was obviously trying to get something done there, really wanted to truly force the engagement. Ryung was like, nope, nope, nope. And more so than that, he punished the guy with good Viking control as well, killing the Colossus. So that just really, I think, to me, shows how good Ryung can be when it comes to handling the mid-game Terran army versus Protoss, specifically. I still don't really like his handling of mid-game armies versus Zerg, but totally different matchup, totally different pace. So what does Hero do for game three? Does he pick up on this? Does he agree with what I'm saying? I have no freaking idea. Does it matter? I don't know that either. He still probably has the utmost confidence in his ability to beat Ryung, considering their history... We are again on like a five win streak, I believe. It's exactly that. But it seems like he might have uh, 
found the problem in that pesky old Stargate opener. The Twilight Council is once again coming down. Now the question is, is it going to be a four gate? Round going for a Reaper opener once more. Clearly not going into the greediest possible 3cc build. Yeah, double gas. After the first one didn't work out. It, it could have. I, again, I will say this. I've seen 3ccs work against four gates, but that game did not. And uh, Hero is trying to pick up on that exactly. What is the follow-up? Is it a 1-1-1? One -one? Is it a 3-racks? Is it a 3cc? Just so difficult to tell. And you don't get that confirmation with the Twilight Council very easily either. We're seeing some pretty consistent ring around the rosy. Depths will finally give up. There's a chance that if it's a cyclone, the cyclone comes down to help. If it's a wood of mine, the wood of mine comes down to help. And that would have been a scout too, but Ryung didn't allow that scout to happen. I think his Reaper just died. Yes, it did, but it should have seen the Twilight Council. The problem is that you don't see the additional buildings. The Reaper is pretty unlikely to get that confirmation on whether it's a two, three, or four gate. It just is so likely to die. So that is the problem. It is a three gate, however. So this could go a little aggressive. If he gets a war prism, that's how it could go. Oh, he's also getting four gases right off the bat. Okay, well, we also have a Banshee on the way. So both players being a little interesting here. Banshees are always such a tough call to make, I feel like, in TVP. I mean, Gumio does it a decent amount. But otherwise, I mean, Banshees, they don't, they're not straight up fighters. They really aren't in general, but I think especially versus Protoss. Which means that if they are forced to try and help against a four gate, they, they are mostly used to try and, you know, tit for tat. You kill my SCVs, I kill your probes. But if in case it is a defensive Protoss, well then the chances are they are defensively positioned. So that's also not exactly ideal for Banshees. I guess what I'm saying is that Banshees do feel like there's a... The rare times they work, they really work. But a lot of other times, I feel like I'm disappointed in Banshees in this matchup. Well, let's see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Hero still doesn't know about the follow-up at this point in time. It wasn't a Widowmine drop, though. He sees that a tank is out. And, uh, well, they de definitely get close enough to see that. Pretty sure. Rung is obviously fearful of a four gate, but it isn't. It actually was a Colossus before third Nexus. So I would say kind of like a secure way of playing, but then also keep in mind, like that first game, it also means that the Colossus could try and get on the forward position and bully the Terran player. And that worked especially well against someone who was trying to get as many barracks units as possible after a third CC. But it works less well against someone who did just go tanks as a secure measure against a possible four gate. The double banshees arrive and they will be killed. One is killed. Two banshees and cloak would not be worth five probe kills. Despite uh, hero being out of position, that recall was quick, that reaction was quick, and the observer was well placed. So, so far not really worth it. Because the lack of stalker harassment's only so helpful too, you know, it's... If Hero could just be on this side of the map, he would, but it's... I don't think it's the biggest deal that he isn't, because he has kind of a grasp as to how his opponent is playing. And if his opponent picks up in a couple of medivacs, he does have spotters. Yeah, tanks do help against those Colossus problems. It's not as worded for that, and Hero also might not, uh, you know, maybe was thinking about doing it if he saw nothing but Bio. But you have to be very, very careful. Because even in that first game, look at how scared I was for Hero for the way that he was playing. Because if he misjudges or he doesn't pay attention and Ryung actually gets a concave on the army, it would have been sketch. It continued tank production, going up to four at least. More tanks does not necessarily mean more gooder. In fact, often I would say it means less gooder. Tanks do help you against Colossus, and they help you against Disruptors as well. 
Well, they don't help you against the charge lots. Proxy gate coming up in the top left. Hero wanting an option to harass or even reinforce the direct engagement, maybe the counterattack, for instance, without needing to worry about a warp prism coming out ASAP. I think that Adept may be just shy of seeing the army move out. Maybe it did, because the army does move in. Oh, there's an observer right there. Okay, the observer definitely saw that. And so Hero's going to match that. Uh, he rung, Kidley pulled back. His tanks are still siege up back at home as well. If Hero wanted to try and take on Ryung's third base, he would need to account for those tanks. But honestly, that would be kind of easy. If his observer saw how they were positioned, Zealots on this side, up this ramp, would be pretty brutal. Ryung actually, I think, seeing as the army was going to come to him, or feeling that it will, does protect his third CC in a much better way. Tanks actually protecting them from the right side. They got a missile turret helping against any... Well, Observer, but honestly, it kind of helps against the Colossus. And Viking sitting into position. No more tank production. Yeah, by the looks of things, maybe I'll swap that off to a reactor. As zealots are now going to be what Hero is going to warp in. And we have now the decision being up to Hero. Does he pull the trigger? Does he try and end the game right here? I think that'd be a very, very dangerous decision to make considering how defensively placed Ryung is. But here he goes. Pulls the army slightly out of position. Jumps on top of the tanks. Gets rid of three of them. Force, oh, two of them. Sorry, that one's under a force field. Force field's also dissecting the army to a certain extent, not letting it pounce on top of whatever is left over after the Zealots have given their lives. And Hero does have an escape path now, which he is using, but he also is reinforcing with the Zealots again over and over with that proxy gate. No Warp Prism quite necessary. I'd say a Warp Prism would make things very safe, though, because it also would help the Colossus micro, but... Not what he wants to do. Scan, I think, accidentally caught that observer, which is still nice for Ryung. Takes away that free vision. And Ryung does seem that he's uh, not content necessarily, but especially with his consistent tank production, it does seem like he's been okay with the idea of playing a very defensive game. Now, the more that he plays defensive, and the less that he gets an opportunity to get out in the map and find Hero in a bad position of which he can get a concave or surround on, the, the less I have faith in Ryung's ability to win. I think he's very powerful in the mid-game when it comes to, to moving, moving around the map and catching the Protoss, but if he does just stay at home, I don't think he's the best Turtle Terran. And then Hero will have a lot more flexibility than he did in the last game as far as sacrificing units and, and pushing and pulling and retreating and playing out to maybe even a very late game, you know, like Stargates, for instance. And this is the pushing and pulling that we're seeing right now. Pushes in, pulls away if he feels he can't win with it, then harasses with the Zealots. Now he pushes in thinking that he can take this engagement. So many Zealots with 2-2 two -two versus 1-1 one -one upgrades, by the way. Ryung's upgrades pretty damn poor in this game. Really making those Zealots look so much stronger. There also aren't any Widow Mines. We're also lacking EMPs at this point. Only one more available. Ryung's army just does not look to be standing strong enough. It does always have the micro potential, I guess, because, again, such a zealot-based army. It can keep on pulling back and back and back, but it'd be a much better feeling if Ryung was pulling back into those Widow Mines, into more EMPs, while also having enough Vikings to shoot down the Colossus as the army tries to engage. I think tanks are, uh, they're, they're, they're really not helping all that much, in my opinion. Sometimes they get great shots on this Colossus. The Immortals take the, the shield pop. The Stalkers all they get depleted as the Protoss doesn't pay attention. I don't know, something like that. But now the tank count is just so, so small that it's almost inconsequential. It's like, is there a tank there? I don't even know. Does that do anything? Probably not. I think if the upgrades were a lot closer, this would be a different issue, though, honestly. Ryong being so freaking late to his 2-2. Such a drastic difference. The Zealots really standing on their own against a lot of these battles, able to successfully retreat without taking full damage. Some of these engagements with the main army, they've only lost their shields. And now we have Hero rallying forward, potentially disruptors, so kind of a similar problem to the Terran rallies forward. Liberators, kind of a siege unit. If you're purely on the defense with a limited amount of room to maneuver, Liberators and Disruptors get so much better. 
Ryung trying to take his fourth base. He's now entirely out of factory units, by the way. I mean, and this is sometimes a way to play, honestly. Like, the factory could be lifted and just scouting for a lot of Terrans at this point. This feels like earlier on would have mine have been so much more helpful. Now it is just about the sheer strength of the armies and the positioning of them. And finally, with Rung having at least plus two attack, it's a little bit better looking on the uh, the upgrades. No, 3-3 three, three just finished. Never mind. <laughs> Heroes 3-3 three, three also coming in strong, but not a whole lot of zealots here. Moving up this ramp, this choke into the wide concave, probably the worst possible position for Hero. It seems like he really wants to force the issue. Uh, and also, I guess, the distraction. The Zealot's coming into the third CC. Maybe now he's looking for a disruptor shot. He's continuing to expand, by the way. Fifth base has been up for a while. Sixth base now on the way. Zealot's also now hitting the natural. And Ryung just has not really gotten anything good happening. I mean, some of these battles might have been okay resource loss-wise. Actually, very close to the resource loss, so there you go. But as far as the momentum, it feels very, very bad for Ryung. Ryung, he is a master of, of that one pivotal fight, though. But that is usually when he's out on the map. Less so when the Protoss can kind of size up the engagement and go, hold on, I don't have to risk it. I don't have to go for like an all-in, basically. I can pull back and buy more time. So it's, it's less about Ryung, I feel like, and more about Hero. It's about Hero over-attacking, which Hero does sometimes do. And that's exactly what Ryung is waiting for, something exactly like this. Surround coming in here, trying to dodge away from the Disruptors as he jumps on top of the Colossus. But honestly, even with that pseudo surround there, that was still a decent battle for Hero. The 3 3 1 upgrade shining against only what was 2 2 for Ryung, as that was a really good engagement. Oh, 30 CC just burned down. Good lord. That was a really good engagement. Medifacts aplenty, Marauders aplenty, two different angles of attack. But it just wasn't quite enough. But I think if the upgrades were 3 3 versus 3 3, I think that would have maybe been enough to have Rung at least try and play this game out. He would have had just enough supply, let's say like 120, 130 supply, to then try and counterattack and do equivalent economic damage. But uh, yeah, down below, sub 100 on your side of the map with only three command centers left alive. Yeah, of course, it is game over. Hero will get the 2 1, will advance on with Cure. And uh, the world seems a little more correct. I mean, Ryung really, really, really tried his best to make the multiple upsets happen, but one was all he could do today. GG's. Hero and Cure move on to the round of eight, and they will complete the round of eight as well, which means that the round of eight, I believe, is starting next week, I think, next Thursday. So, of course, we'll be casting that. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the games and the cast. Bye-bye.